Hello, my name's Brian. I'm here to tell you about something that happened to me a few weeks ago. But first a question. Isn't it truly amazing that your life can be turned upside down in just one-tenth of a second? It can. And soon, you'll find out why. Let's not bore you with a lot of details about my life. I'll cut to the chase. I was born in New York 23 years ago, and growing up, I was always somewhat of a child prodigy. I studied at Columbia and finished my physics degree with honors last year. During the summer, I arranged interviews with several universities, hoping I'd get into a decent PhD program. And in the end, I was chosen by the best. Professor Silva at Berkeley offered me the chance to do my doctoral studies at the Applied Physics Department he runs there. It was a dream come true. I packed my bags and got ready to move to California. I was ready to drive from coast to coast without stopping. I had no idea of the events that would take place within just a few days. About the mess I was going to get in. Strange people about to cross my path. The hundreds of dangers lurking behind every corner. Yes, it was quite an adventure. go back to the beginning. As I told you, my old car and I were ready to go to California. I decided to take off at night and get a few miles behind me before dawn. I said goodbye to my parents, my sister and my dog, and I got behind the wheel. That's when I remembered I forgot to pick up a book I'd ordered at a bookshop downtown in Manhattan. Luckily, it was one of those bookstores that stays open 24-7, so I decided to grab the book on the way. I could have asked them to mail it to me once I got to California, but uh, no, I decided to go into Manhattan and get it myself. That one detour changed my life forever. Oh my god! Stay away. It's better if they don't see us. She's unconscious. I'm taking her to the hospital. We'll take care of her at the hospital. Maybe that moron did the dirty work for us and she's already dead. Maybe, but we better make sure.
did. I'm telling you. On the way to the bookshop, I hit that girl with my car. I was scared stiff. She suddenly ran out in front of me. There was no way I could stop. Luckily for both of us, she wasn't that badly hurt. They did a bunch of tests on her at the hospital and said she had no major injuries. She was just in shock. So they decided to keep her under observation for 24 hours. A nurse took her to a room and gave her some strong medicine that put her to sleep. By the way, I, I don't know if I mentioned it, the girl's name was Gina, and she was amazingly beautiful. The truth is, I had no reason to stick around, so I went to say goodbye to her and go on my way. Please, don't leave. They want to kill me. There, there. Calm down. It's all over now. I hit you with my car, but you're fine. You're in a hospital recovering from- No, I'm telling you, they want me dead. I've got to get out of here. Who are they? Please, calm down and tell me why you think they want to murder you. Something awful happened tonight, and I witnessed the whole thing. Look, I'm a singer. I work at the Pink Iguana, a trendy place with live shows. This evening, when I finished my act, my dad was waiting for me. He works for a secret government agency. He told me he needed to tell me something. He said it was an emergency. Gina, kiddo, I'm in danger. I've gotten into a really big mess, and I'm afraid you're not safe either. What's the matter, Daddy? Oh, you're frightening me. There's no time to explain. They're right behind me. I need you to keep this crucifix, and no matter what happens, don't let them find out you have it. You can't trust anybody, not even the police. But Daddy, please, tell me what's going on. They're here. Quick, grab the crucifix, and don't let them see you with me. It was awful. Some guys pulled my dad away and took him into the storeroom. I scrambled away just in time and got the crucifix without them seeing me. I followed them to the storeroom. They tied my dad to a chair and violently started interrogating him. These two henchmen wouldn't stop hitting him, and my heart froze when I saw who was giving the orders. The Sandretti brothers. The famous mafia bosses? How'd your dad get mixed up with those guys? I don't know, but they... Get him to tell you what he knows. Beat the truth out of him, if you must. Speak. Where is it? I won't say a word, damn you! You're gonna speak now. Speak or die. You choose. Go to hell! It seems our friend doesn't want to cooperate. What a shame. So, we got a tough boy on our hands. You're not easily convinced, huh? Boys, maybe you're being too soft on our little hero. Did you hear that? The boss says we're being softies. Aya! What are you doing? Didn't you hear his neck crack? You killed him, man. Up there. You already know the rest of the story. I ran out through an alleyway, and when I crossed the street... Please, don't leave me. They'll kill me. Don't worry. Just rest for now. Go to sleep. I won't leave you. She fell asleep. Those tranquilizers must have taken effect. What a story. I don't know what to think. The poor thing is probably in shock from the accident. I bet she dreamt all this, but what if it's true? What if her life really is in danger? I can't just leave her here and forget all about it. I'd never forgive myself if something happened to her. Okay, that's it. I'm not leaving this hospital until I'm sure Gina's completely out of danger. But how are you supposed to act in a situation like this? Yeah, I, I think I'd better do something to protect Gina in case those Mafia murderers she says want to kill her show up. Hmm, let's see. It's a map of this floor of the hospital. Here's the room I'm in. Here's the hall, and if I'm not mistaken, across the hall and just to the left of this room, there's a storeroom. That could be interesting. Help fight AIDS.
Those are the same kind of sleeping pills Gina took. It's empty. It's cracked. Gina must have broken it when she took that sleeping pill. Snooze at all. One of the finest brands on the market. Standard hospital linens. I suppose that's where the patients keep their personal belongings. It belongs to Gina. She was carrying it when I ran her over. I'll keep it until Gina wakes up. Let's see. Hmm, a matchbox I might be able to use. They're from a bar called the Pink Iguana. The city is so peaceful at this time of night. It's turned off this time of year. What can I say? It's just a toilet bowl. Nature isn't calling right now. And yes, I admit I'm pretty shy about doing certain things in public, okay? Out of order. Well, I'm afraid the shower's out of order. There aren't even any faucets. I like that big apple sticker. It's a bottle of alcohol. This could be useful. It's one of those waste baskets that opens up when you step on the lever. Someone threw away a marking pen. It might still work. I can't, it's, it's locked shut. contains a description of her injuries in the name of her doctor. This could be useful. It's turned off this time of year. The city is so peaceful at this time of night. Okay, I'll try to reach the storeroom by walking along the ledge. Hope I live to tell the grandkids! Yikes! I better not look down. I almost didn't make it. So, the map was right. This is the storeroom. Let's see what I can find in this dump. A 
box of syringes. I'll grab one. It's empty. They contain all sorts of medical equipment. I don't need any of that. It's full of files, papers, and other hospital records. I think it weighs too much. It's full of files, papers, and other hospital records. It's full of files. There are several files inside labeled incoming and outgoing medicines from 1994 to 1998. Those files don't interest me. The drawers are locked shut. It's a medical information card that's put into the charts by the beds. It's blank. Looky here, a Vademicum. I may be needing this. Wow, this is thorough. It includes a description of almost every medicine known to man. It's blank. That doesn't make sense. He's seen better days. Hmm, okay. But I think I'll just take his head with me. His head's got a hole in one side so you can examine his brain. They're the pillows used in the patient's beds. I'll take them both. Well, they're big and very fluffy. Spray cleaner. I may be needing this. Now the syringe is full of alcohol. Let's see. Yes, this wig is just what I was looking for. Let's see. That crucifix Gina's father gave her is in here. Perfect. That way no one can see the hole in his head. Hmm, I don't really know what to do. I hope they don't put another patient in this bed tonight. It contains a description of her injuries in the name of her doctor. Hmm, I, I better not. If someone came in, they might get suspicious if they see the chart is empty. Great, this marker's as dry as a bone. It won't work. Heh, <laughs> betcha that put some new life into the marker. Good. You can't tell the difference between this and a real chart.
Good. That way nobody will know it's Gina lying in this bed. Probably not a very good idea if the bed is empty. Okay, if I use the pillows to look like the body, the head with the wig and a sheet to cover it all up a bit, I can make it look like a woman is sleeping here. That should do the trick. She's perfect for the part. She's sleeping so peacefully. Save it for later. She's in a deep sleep. Organ donors needed. This chart's empty. Perfect. That way they'll think it's Gina who's in the bed. This isn't her. She must be the one in the other bed. Yes! Say goodbye to the world, you little tramp. Hey! Gina! just asleep. But those tranquilizers must have been made for elephants. Well, the important thing is, the trick worked and they shot the dummy in the other bed. So everything Gina told me was true. They actually do want to knock her off. It wasn't just her imagination. Okay, let's calm down, Brian. Right now, they think she's dead, which will buy us a bit of time. But we can't waste a minute. I gotta wake Gina up and get her out of this place before they find out she's alive and well. figure out what it says about Snoozatol, the sleep medication that Gina took. It says the effects are powerful and almost immediate. The patient sleeps for hours and can only be awakened by a nice cold shower. Hmm, I don't think I'm strong enough to lug Gina into the shower, so I'll have to come up with another way of pouring cold water on her. It sprays water in case of fire.
It's too high up. I won't be able to get the match close enough to set it off. Good idea. I could use it as a flamethrower and make the sprinkler go off. The water would finally wake Gina up. Let's get to work. But careful, Brian. Don't broil your hand off. Ouch! I burns like a freeze. Ow! Uh. Now you wake up. Hurry, we've got to exit. Stage left at once. But what's going on? This water, <laughs> the smoke. I'll tell you later. Let me grab your stuff. You can change in the car. Come on, let's get to the parking lot. So you got that awful killer to shoot a dummy instead of shooting me? Hey, I like your style. First, you try to run me down with your car, and then you save my life. Do you do this kind of thing very often? No, I was just... It's a good thing that you grabbed my purse, because otherwise we wouldn't have the crucifix my father gave me. Now, what we have to do is... Headed for the nearest police station. This is a very serious matter, and it has to be placed in the hands of the police. No way. Let's keep the cops out of this, okay? If the government gets caught up in this, we don't know if we can trust them. Gina, the people that killed your father are after you now. If we go to the police, they'll make sure that... Read my lips. No, this is too big for the police, and we can't trust them. We have to find out what this crucifix means. Look, this all seems crazy to me. It's your problem if you decide not to turn to the police, but I'm washing my hands of the whole affair. I'm on my way to California. They're expecting me at Berkeley and... I can't believe this guy. You practically turned me into roadkill, and now you want to feed me to the wolves? And here I was actually starting to believe you. But... Forget it. It's not worth it. Oh, why would you care if my father was killed? Why does it matter to you if I'm murdered or if my whole family's destroyed? Okay already. L let me tell you what we're going to do. I have a friend who's an anthropologist. He works at the Museum of Archaeology and Natural History in Chicago. Well, since it's practically on my itinerary anyway, I'll drive you there and we can try to figure out more about that crucifix, okay? I knew I could count on you. You're a doll. Start this baby up. We can't waste any time. Hey, you know where my blonde wig is? I was carrying it in my purse and now I can't seem to find it. Have you confirmed that? Yes, Don Roberto. Gustav is at the hospital right now. He's checked up on it. I can't see how that girl escaped. Looks like the guy who ran over her is along for the ride. They left the hospital together. Useless idiots. Have you identified this man's car? Yes, Don Roberto. We know the model, color, and license plate number. At least you've done something, Theodore. Meet with Gustav and be prepared. As soon as we locate the vehicle, you're gonna go after them. Whatever you say, Don Roberto. I assure you. We won't let them ditch us again. I hope not. Don't worry, Roberto. Those two couldn't have gotten very far. Carlo, you know I'm thinking something here. I'm almost glad that girl's still alive. What do you mean? That girl witnessed what happened, and if she talks, we're in big trouble. I know that. But it's obvious she hasn't gone to the police. I wonder why. Mm, I don't know. Maybe she's there right now. I'll bet you one dollar she won't stew on us. You know why? Because she knows something. I think our men spoke with her before that animal Gustav broke his neck. Besides, why else would she have been in the storeroom? Yeah, you may be right, brother. In which case, we gotta make her spill the beans. See what she knows. You're right, Carlo. We'll do that. Now we gotta get out the warning to all our boys out there. Make sure everyone's on the lookout for that car. I guess there's no other excuse for getting involved. <laughs> Gina had me dazzled. I can't deny it. But what would you have done? A beautiful girl asks you for help, so what do you do? Kick her out of your car on some corner? I don't think so. 
It took us a whole day to get to Chicago because the old hunk of junk I drive is no race car. Along the way, we stopped to have some snacks and keep the car from overheating. We took turns driving so both of us could get in some shut-eye. We got to the museum pretty late, but my friend Clive knew we were on the way, so he waited up for us. Well, we made it to the museum. Let's park in the back. Okay. Hey, it's Munchkin Blob here. I'm calling from Chicago, and guess what? I just saw that car you're looking for. I swear I haven't had a drink, and I'm sure it's the same car. Yeah, a dopey-looking guy with some gal. They went into the Museum of Archaeology and Natural History. Sure thing, I'll tell them. So, you're trying to find out the precise origin of this crucifix. It must be quite important for you to have come all the way here at this time of night. It really is, Clive, but there's no time to explain. What can you tell us about the crucifix? I can assure you it's a matter of life and death. Well, all right. Let's see. Quite a while ago, the museum trustees acquired the latest three-dimensional scanner for the museum's analysis laboratory. It's capable of analyzing the composition of any object, dating it, and performing a morphological study in order to catalog it. It has the most thorough art and archaeology database that exists in the whole world. We could most certainly use the scanner to delve into the origin of the crucifix. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go straight to the lab now! Just one moment. Uh, not so fast. Our first predicament is the poor condition the crucifix is in. It's obviously coated with a layer of filth that will make it impossible for the scanner to perform an accurate analysis. We must restore the crucifix first, if the scanner is to work properly. Well, let's restore it then. You can do it, can't you, Clive? I'm afraid not. I'm an anthropologist, not a restoration specialist. That sort of job must be performed by Dr. Oliva, the museum's finest art restorer. She just happens to work down the corridor at the restoration laboratory. She's there at this very moment. Yes, let's go talk to her now. Uh, hold on, there's another problem. In three days, the museum will be opening an exhibition on Mayan art. We are already behind schedule and Dr. Oliva is overwhelmed with work, trying to restore all the pieces for the exhibition. I'm truly sorry, but you'll have to wait for the doctor to finish her work before having the crucifix restored. And I doubt that will happen for at least three days. Three days? No way! I can't wait three days! Professor Silva is waiting for me in California and... This is unbelievable, Brian. You're already thinking of leaving me here defenseless? No, I wouldn't do that. But I can't wait for three days either. I'm gonna talk with this doctor and try to get her to restore the crucifix tonight. Oh dear, you can try to, Brian, but I'm warning you. Susan Oliva is not an easy woman to sway. If I were you, I certainly wouldn't dare make such a proposition until she's completed all her work for the exhibition. Well, I have to try. You said she was next door, right? Yes, through the first door on the left when you leave my office. Good luck, my friend. You'll be needing it. Listen here, Gina. What do you say if we take a little stroll around the museum and I show you some of its hidden mysteries? A stroll? I see you haven't changed a bit, Clive. Anyway, we'll meet up here in a little while. Uh, I don't know. Well, all right. Let's take a stroll. Hello? Dr. Oliva? Yes, who are you? Pleased to meet you, Doctor. My name's Brian Basco. I brought you an object to be restored. It's a crucifix, which... Listen, boy, this wretched son of Utsitsa has taken me two weeks of work to finish. And all of the numbered objects on these shelves here have to be restored by the time the Mayan art exhibition opens in 36 hours. But this is an emergency, Doctor. There are lives at stake. My life will be at stake if the items on those shelves aren't ready for the exhibition, all right? Doctor, it is of the utmost importance that you restore this crucifix right now. 
Look here, boy. Didn't I make myself clear? I have to restore all of the numbered items on the shelf. Every last one. In 36 hours! If I don't have a hernia first, that is. What is the son of Uxitsa? It's the most important piece on display at the Mayan exhibition. A stone mask with a large ruby set in the forehead. It was recently found at a temple in Piedras Negras in Honduras. I've been working to restore it and leave it in perfect condition for two weeks. I have no doubt that it will be the centerpiece of the exhibition. You must take pride in your work. Despite a lack of certain indispensable means, my work has been praised by the most prestigious of journals. So yes, I suppose there is a reason to feel pride. Are you a specialist in the art of the Maya? I'm a specialist in art. A professional, if you know what that word means. Where's the mask you mentioned? It's such a priceless piece that it won't be placed in the exhibit until the very last moment. It's held in a special vault that's kept at the ideal temperature and humidity needed to preserve the mask. Just what does your work consist of? My job is to restore works of art. And let me tell you something, no one in the world does it better than I do. How are the pieces cataloged? The museum uses the latest scanner, which examines the piece using radiation. After determining the age and makeup of the item, the database is searched and a report is issued. Of course, an expert opinion is required at that point. I thought a museum like this would have more resources. Thinking is so simple. Don't you think I might work more efficiently if you leave me alone? What are you doing right now? Right now, I'm using a small lathe to clean up any flaws on the object. Then a laser smooths it out. Must be pretty interesting to work in this museum. It could be interesting if I were an employee, but actually, I'm a downtrodden slave. I've been asking for an assistant to help me get this department in shape for months, and the only thing I get back are letters about a lack of funds. They're a swarm of parasites, I'm telling you! I'll just let you work. Fine. Some of the objects have a numbered sticker under them. The number must show what order they're supposed to be restored in. Cool. I'll trade it for the object that's next on the list to be restored. Done. The doctor didn't even notice. Now all the doctor has to do is finish the object she's working on and start restoring the crucifix. The tank is half full. I'm not thirsty. It's empty. It looks like some sort of talcum powder container. This could be useful. What in the world is that contraption for? It doesn't look very powerful. I think it could be made stronger by putting in a larger ruby. Hmm, could be a briefcase full of varnish. I'll take this one here. It's colorless. But it could come in handy. It seems like a human, but one that hasn't evolved much. Cro-Magnon or something. No, the idea of walking around with a dead man doesn't really appeal to me. I think all of those objects have been restored already.
Now all the doctor has to do is finish the object she's working on and start restoring the crucifix. No doubt about it, the laboratory for doing analyses has got to be behind this door. It's impossible to open manually. It's a public phone. No, I don't feel like calling anyone. Check out this large bone. Hmm, must be from some prehistoric animal. No, it's uh, too big for my mother's Sharpe. Triceratops, late Cretaceous, found in North America, Alberta, Colorado, Montana, South Dakota, Saskatchewan, and Wyoming. Hello? Hey, you're a friend of Clive's, aren't you? I saw you come in with him and that hot babe. Yes, my name is Brian, Brian Basco. Brian? Dude, what a name! Are you a geek or what? I'm Willie. I'm in charge of administration here at this dump. Administration? You mean maintenance and all that, right? No, dude. I mean I'm gonna smack you silly if you don't quit yapping. I'm not a maid, I'll have you know. This whole museum would go to pot if it wasn't for me. And besides, you should know that I run my own small business. Okay, guy, calm down. What kind of small business are you running? Let's just say I represent a laboratory equipment factory. Here, take one of my cards in case you need any of our fine products. William P. Dustin, laboratory equipment. There's a phone number on it. Thanks, I'll keep it in mind. Uh, about that business of yours? Hello? Hey, Mr. Potter! Yeah, you know, it's always a pleasure to do business with you. What do you need this time? A 100x eyepiece for an optical microscope? Hmm, I'll have to see if they're in stock, but I probably can. Let me check with the warehouse, okay? Call me back in 10 minutes. Sure, sure. We'll discuss price later. Same to you, Mr. Potter. See ya. Hey, dude, let's drop the small talk. I got other affairs going on. Well, you know how it is. Business is business. Okay, okay, goodbye. He's going up the stairs. Let's see where to. Look at him jive along. No way! Willie knows the combination to get into the analysis laboratory. I don't know how he got the combination because I highly doubt he's authorized to go in there. Now I think I know where the laboratory equipment factory that Willie supposedly represents is really located. Tyrannosaurus Rex, late Cretaceous era. Found in North America, Alberta, Montana, Saskatchewan, Texas, and Wyoming.
I don't know much about art, but this all looks amazing. I guess it's some Mayan god. It's a human figure dressed as a king with some kind of bowls at his feet. I guess those objects represent the offerings the Maya made to their kings and gods. They look like bowls and pitchers. I don't think I'll be needing any of that right now. I'd say it's a small bucket. I'd better not, they'd notice if it was gone. Besides, I can't think of what I'd use it for. This looks like a teapot. I believe it's nothing more than a big cup. I better not, they'd notice if it was gone. Besides, I can't think of what I'd use it for. I'm clueless, but something tells me this must have been some sort of altar or a sacred part of the Mayan culture. This controls access to the analysis laboratory. Good idea, go for it. Now I can't touch any of the keys. If I leave a fingerprint behind, it would ruin the entire plan. The next thing I have to do is get Willie to enter the combination that opens the door. So his fingerprints are left behind on the right keys. It's a public phone. Hmm, good idea. I'll call Willie and try to get him to enter the analysis laboratory. That way, I can try to find out the access code. I hope the number on that business card he gave me is his real phone number. Hello? Mr. Dustin? Yeah, that's me. What can I do for you? Well, my name is Frank Steiger. I, I'm a friend of Mr. Potter's. He told me you could furnish me with some products that I need. Sure. It's a pleasure to do business with a friend of Mr. Potter's. He's one of my best customers, you know. By the way, your voice sounds familiar. Do we know each other, Mr. Steiger? No, I don't think so. Well, anyway, what can I do you for? Well, I was interested in some eyepieces. Yeah, eyepieces for optical microscopes. Whoa, this must be repeat request night. Seems like everyone's looking for the same thing. Come again? Nothing, Mr. Stagger. Just running off at the mouth. Tell me, what kind of eyepieces do you need? I can tell you I got a nice set of 100Xs. Well, I was looking for some 200X eyepieces, actually. 200, huh? Well, I'll have to check the warehouse. Call me back in 10 minutes, and I'll tell you if we have any in stock. OK. Talk to you soon, then. Talk to you soon, Mr. Steiger. He's coming up now. I'll hide behind here. I should wait for Willie to leave the lab before going in there myself. It'd be embarrassing for the two of us to run into each other.
This controls access to the analysis laboratory. Perfect. Now I can tell which keys have Willie's fingerprints on them and guess the combination. I'll only dust the keys that have varnish on them. Cool. Now I can tell Willie's fingerprints apart from mine, no problem. And it looks like the varnish dried completely with the powder on it. So now I can press the keys without having to worry about erasing the fingerprints. The numbers that make up the code are 1, 3, 7, and 8. All I have to do is figure out the right combination. If I remember right, when I saw Willie enter the combination, the sounds the keys made went something like, hmm, 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 hmm. No, that's, that's not right. They sounded more like this. <laughs> yeah, that's it. 8137. I won't forget that combination. Hmm, it's pretty dark in here, but I better not turn on the lights. I don't want anyone to find me here. I wouldn't want to have to use this, so I'd better watch how I handle the devices in here. It looks like a thermal chamber used to keep pieces of art under ideal conditions of temperature and humidity. The Sun of Uxitsa star display at the Mayan Art Exhibition has got to be in there! Hmm, it's an old key or something. Maybe I'll find a place to use it. Well, how about that? There was a note under it. Let's see. Clive, here is the ancient Aztec key all clean and polished like you requested. Next time, don't wait so long before having it cleaned. It was disgustingly filthy. See you next Monday. Signed by a guy named Ron. So the key belongs to Clive. Well, I'll just give it to him later. This must be the high-tech scanner that Clive was talking about. It looks like it can date and analyze the makeup of a piece of art, as well as performing a morphological study on the piece in order to catalog it using an enormous database. It will undoubtedly help me find out more about the crucifix once I've had it restored. It's filled with liquid nitrogen. I'm quite familiar with these from my university days. It must be crucial for certain delicate pieces of art to be at the right temperature and humidity. I can see that Gina and Clive have gone on that casual little stroll around the museum. There's no doubt about it, Clive's the same old guy as ever. He'd ignore his own mother to chase after a woman. It's chock full of books and exotic items. There's not a soul in the street. Just that munchkin over there, who seems to be waiting for someone. Let's see, this is a two volume treatise on anthropology. 
I was never very interested in this subject, but I may need the books to find my way around the museum. Hey, look what was hidden under the books on the table. It's an X-shaped crack. Yes, I bet the key fits perfectly. Aha! Look what we have here. A hidden safe. It looks like a bunch of documents and stuff. No way! I can't take Clive's private documents. It's a voice recorder. Well, okay. I'll just borrow it from Clive for a while. Then I'll give it back to him. It's chock full of books and exotic items. I can't go out of the office and just leave the hidden safe open. Let's take a peek. I know it can't be opened manually. I think you have to push that button over there to open it. It activates the thermal chamber opening system. Please state your name for the voice identification system. Brian Basco. Name invalid. Access denied. I don't think I'll get it to open that way. Excuse me, Doctor, could you tell me your name again? Dr. Susan Oliva. It's marked clearly on the door. Alright, let's see if the plan works. Please state your name for the voice identification system. Dr. Susan. Name invalid. Access denied. What in the world? Oh, the battery went dead right when I needed it. I'll take the battery out of the tape recorder. Gotta find a battery with some power. Reminds me of the ones they used to taste wine. It looks like the ones used for wine tasting.
Let's see if it fits. Perfect! Fits like a glove. Well, this is a good opportunity to check whether you can restore some of a dead battery's energy by lowering its temperature. Let's remove the battery from the ladle. The battery is definitely frozen. I hope it'll make the tape recorder run now. Voila! I hope the recorder will work now. I hope the battery lasts long enough. Please state your name for the voice identification system. Dr. Susan Oliva. Identification verified. Good evening, Dr. Oliva. Please remember that the chamber will automatically close in 30 seconds. It worked! I shouldn't do this, but I've already had to do so many other crazy things tonight. I hope nothing serious happens to it once it's outside the thermal chamber. Good idea. Maybe I can use it to get the ruby out. Cool! It worked! doesn't look very powerful. I think it could be made stronger by putting in a larger ruby. Let's see if I can put this one in place of the one that's already there. Fantastic! I think this will make the laser be much more powerful. Now I'll wait for the doctor to come and use the laser. It worked! My heart goes out to the good doctor, but there was nothing else I could do. I need an ice mocha, now! It seems like a kind of old-fashioned model. Listen, doctor. Let me tell you what we're gonna do. You just keep working as though nothing happened, and I'll sweep up the pieces of that figurine. Just wait and see. No one will ever miss it. I've worked in this field for 20 years, and I've never damaged one thing. Not one crack, I tell you. Not a scrape. Nothing. Until today, that is. different types of coffee. Cappuccino, espresso, cafe au lait, ice blended mocha. I think the little red light that's on means it's out of coffee. Hi, Willie. Hey, man. How's it going? I noticed the coffee machine upstairs has had a coffee. Yeah, it went dry this afternoon. When are you going to refill it? Listen, man, don't be so demanding. 
Yesterday, I put the last package left in the storeroom, so I can't do anything about it right now. Well, I could sure use a cup of joe. Isn't there anything you can do to get it to make just one more cup? Just one more cup? Of course. You can go up to it and softly whisper, nice little machine. Couldn't you serve me one more cup of coffee, please? I'm telling you, no. If it's out of coffee, it's out of coffee. And there's nothing more to it. It's all that crazy Dr. Oliva's fault. She is one sick lunatic. She must put away 20 eye smokers a day. No wonder she's so edgy all the time, the old bat. What can you tell me about Dr. Oliva? That crazy doc? She's a hysterical pain in the butt. She's one bitter obsession piece about her work. You can tell I don't like her, huh? She's always breathing down my neck over something or other. And besides that, she's damn ugly. Your little friend Clive, now there's one cool guy. And I'm not just saying it because you're going to repeat it to him. I don't kiss up to nobody. This Mayan art exhibition is a pretty big deal, isn't it? Hell yeah! Totally, dude! What gripes me most is that it's opening in three days, and that dust bag Dr. Oliva is putting in overtime here day and night to get all the stuff ready for this mess. I don't feel sorry for that old bag, you hear? She can take a hike for all I care, but I'd feel much more relaxed if she'd be less of a fixer and a fixture. Know what I'm saying? I don't want to take up any more of your time, Willie. See you later. See ya. It's a human figure dressed as a king with some kind of bowls at his feet. I guess those objects represent the offerings the Maya made to their kings and gods. Hey, that bowl there has something that looks a lot like coffee in it. I'm grabbing it. Maybe I can use this to make Dr. Oliva some coffee. Willie, here's some coffee so you can refill the machine upstairs. Mm, I don't know, dude. That doesn't look like coffee to me. Anyway, those are coffee beans, and that stupid machine ain't gonna work with nothing but coffee that's all ground up, man. Brings back memories of Dr. Sidow, my dentist. I might be able to use the lathe to grind the coffee beans. It worked like magic! Now this coffee-like stuff has been ground.
Hi, Willie. Hey, man. How's it going? I don't want to take up any more of your time, Willie. See you later. See ya. Willie, here's some coffee so you can refill the machine upstairs. Mm. Dude, are you sure this crud is coffee? Yeah, of course it's good coffee. I buy it in bulk. No, man, I'll pass. It's not that I don't trust you, dude, but I don't want any trouble. I'd rather use the job I normally pick up for the machine in case I get busted. There's something inside. Let's take a look. It's an empty package of coffee. All right, it may be just what I need. It's empty, but I can still smell coffee. Okay, start pouring. Phew, that was just the right amount. Now it looks like a brand new package of coffee. Willie, here's some coffee so you can refill the machine upstairs. Dude, this is the brand I always use. Yeah, baby, this is right on time. See, now I don't have to go out tomorrow and buy some. I'm gonna go fill up that junky coffee machine right away. This Willie guy is an unusual character. Well, let's see if I can finally take this rich aromatic coffee to the doctor. I'll just wait one little moment so Willie has time to refill the machine. Okay, let's go. working now. The red light is off. Okay, I'll just get one. I hope it's nice and strong. Here, doctor, have some coffee. It'll make you feel better. Now, that's better, isn't it? Come on, you can start working again now that you've calmed down. We wouldn't want the Mayan exhibition to be canceled because you didn't finish your work, would we now? Of course not. I'll get to work immediately, and no one's gonna stop me this time, not even the feds. Munchkin Bob, I see you haven't grown much in the past few years. If it ain't Gustav, my one-eyed pal, it looks like the eye they ripped out of you hasn't grown back either. Careful, Bob. Don't tempt me. Let's just get down to business. They're still in that dumb museum, right? That's right. The car hasn't moved from the lot. 
We can wait here until they come out and grab them. Without the car, they could have escaped in some other direction. Nah, I won't run the risk of having them get away again. Let's go after them. You wait here, Bob, and watch to see if the cops show up. Okay, Gustav, whatever you say. Well, I had to leave the doctor alone so she could pay full attention to restoring the crucifix. But it's been a while now, and being as enthused as she was after drinking that coffee, I'm sure the crucifix is all finished. So, I'm going in. Man, it looks like the doctor is completely out of it. But I see she managed to finish restoring the crucifix. Excellent. It certainly needed polishing. Oh, huh, looks like new. Hmm, this is interesting. Now I'm sure we can find out where it came from and what it's for. I better go to the lab right away and use the scanner to check out the crucifix. What a weird night! Are you guys friends of Clive's too? First came that hot babe with Brian the Dweeb Man, who I have nothing against, of course. He may be a nerd, but he's a nice guy. And now you guys, man! By the way, what are those get-ups you're wearing, man? And you know what? It's about time I found out what that is. Let's see if I can figure out how to work the fancy scanner. So, the crucifix is of Hopi origin. The Hopi are a Native American tribe that lives in Arizona. Great. That is an important piece of information, but I'm starting to understand this whole story less and less. The materials that the crucifix is made of aren't valuable at all. And even though it's probably of some historical value, it'd never be worth killing people over. There must be something else behind the story of this crucifix. Brian, quick, follow me. It's Gina, she's in danger. Sorry, Brian! No! You told me you wouldn't hurt me if I handed it over to you! No! As you can imagine, this is when things got really out of control. Luckily, those guys were interested in knowing what we'd found out. Otherwise, I doubt they'd have let us live. Of course, that blow to the head knocked me out, and I didn't know what was going on for quite a while. When I came to, I realized that we were flying in a helicopter. My head ached and pounded, and when Gina told me what happened to Clive, well, I felt absolutely awful to know they'd done away with him. I couldn't stop thinking that if I hadn't gone to the museum that night, he'd still be alive. I did my best to get over it, and decided that feeling sorry for him would get us nowhere. The sad truth was that I'd have the same fate as Clive if I didn't come up with a plan. The instinct for survival and a desire for revenge took over my thoughts, and I totally forgot about Clive. A bit later, the helicopter began to descend. I could see we were landing in a desert area in the middle of what looked like an old oil field. We were taken out of the helicopter and put inside of an old cabin. It was pretty obvious they were mainly interested in Gina. As soon as we got in the cabin, they tied her to a chair and started to beat the living daylights out of me. They put me to sleep once again with a well-aimed pistol whip at the back of my neck. When I woke up, I was all turned around and I thought my head was going to explode. Ouch! Oh, my aching head. Those wretched thugs smack me up good. I swear these insane murderers are gonna pay for this. On top of it all, they stole everything I had on me. My wallet, my car keys, my piece of amber, everything. I'll try to get my stuff back. But the first thing I've gotta do is find out what they've done with Gina and try to get out of this huge mess in one piece. There's a fairly large crack in the middle of the door. I'm starting to lose my temper, Gina. 
I want answers. And I want them now! Leave me alone. You're just a bunch of filthy murderers. I have to help Gina. Those animals are capable of doing anything. It's just filled with junk. Most of it's all old and worn out. Fresh Bubbles, the soft drink preferred by more Americans. Weighs a ton. There's no way I can get it to move if it's full. It's shut. There isn't even a can of soda, but it's full of huge blocks of ice. Done that. Now it'll start to defrost. all-purpose cleanser. I'll take it with me, but there's no way I'm cleaning this pigsty up. There's such a thick layer of dust, I can hardly see through it. It's a pretty old model. It's one of those blower thingies that people once used to get the fire to burn hotter. I may be needing this. Yeah, this should come in handy. It's a chamois. I may be needing this. The glass is so filthy the light can barely get through. It's just filled with junk. Most of it's all old and worn out. I think it's one of the pegs from the coat rack on the wall. This could be useful. The glass is so filthy the light can barely get through. Done. Now the chamois can be used for cleaning. Okay, that way I can get the sun to come in through the window. Let's wipe it clean. Wow, hard to believe the layer of dirt on there. Let the sun shine in. All right, now that the power to the freezer's been cut off, the lid is open and the sun is shining in on the blocks of ice. I think it'll defrost in a jiffy. It's been a while, let me see. The ice is completely melted, but now the freezer's full of water. That's where the water drains out when you defrost the freezer. Yeah, that's how I'll empty the water out of the freezer. Okay, it looks like it's all empty now. Okay, here we go. 
I think I can move it now that it's empty. Cool, a trap door. I knew it! Something was telling me the solution was hiding under that heavy freezer. It's locked closed with a padlock. Yes, I'll try to pry the padlock off. Done! Now I can get the heck out of this wretched cabin. Now that I got the padlock off, I can open it with no trouble. All right, I think I can slip out under the cabin. I'll be careful not to go out through the front so they don't catch me. Here we go. <sighs> I made it out. I'll hide behind those rocks and think about what to do next. Hello! What rock did you climb out from under, handsome? Uh, hi, I... He's here to rescue us, girls! We're saved! To rescue you? But I thought I was the one. Did that lizard Jules send you? Jules? Wait, hold on. I don't know what you're talking about. I just escaped from that cabin there. Some mafia thugs were holding me prisoner. Me and my, uh, uh well, a friend of mine. You've got to help me set her free. Her life is in danger. I was just in that cabin a while ago. We saw a chopper fly in, and I went there to ask for help. But some guy with an eye patch told me to do an about face and never come back there if I didn't want to become buzzard food. Listen, cutie, we're in a jam here too. We are artists on a nationwide tour, and our bus broke down a week ago. We've been stuck in this godforsaken desert all this time. Our driver Jules, who accompanied us on tour, went for hell. And well, we haven't heard from Jules again. I bet that jerk took off with all the money we gave him and left us out here to become cactus fertilizer. Jules said he knew of a shortcut through this hot desert and that we'd get to Las Vegas much faster his way. I bet the swindler had it all planned out. I bet he broke the bus himself to steal our money and leave us here with the rattlesnakes. Well, I see you're not doing much better than me, but I'm sure we can work together to find a way out of here. The most important thing to me is freeing Gina. Those guys are dangerous and might do away with her at any moment. And you girls have to help me. Don't get me wrong, but I trust guys like you less and less every day. Who is this Gina woman? Why are they holding her captive in that cabin? Who are those guys you say you're running from? And most importantly, who are you? It's a long story, and we're running out of time. Believe me, I'm one of the good guys, and I can assure you they're the bad guys. Will you help me? By the way, my name's Brian. Hi, I'm Carla. And I'm Mariola. Charmed. And I'm Lula in... Mm. Hey, we're with you on this, you big hunk. We'll help you out. Do you have a plan, dear? A plan? Of course. A plan to free your girlfriend and get us innocent lambs out of here. She's not my girlfriend. And, well, I haven't thought of a plan yet. She's not your girlfriend. A handsome man like you with no girlfriend? Mm. You don't like women much. That's it, isn't it? Okay, okay, she is my girlfriend. And I think I do have a plan. Just let me think a while and let the plan develop. Develop, develop. In the meantime, I'm gonna rehearse my new dance move. Yeah, and I'm gonna get back to my time. And I'm going to rest for a while. I'm simply exhausted. Got it. Hey! Don't you want to hear my plan? Why don't you just wait until you got everything ready? Okay, Luscious? Okay, okay. Don't wear yourselves out, girls. Okay, first of all, let's go over the plan again. We've got to get the thugs' attention so they leave the house. Then, I can go in and untie Gina, and we'll escape through the trap door. When those thugs go back inside the house and realize Gina and I are gone, we'll implement part two of the plan. Somehow locking the bad guys inside the cabin so they can't come after us. Last of all, part three is finding a getaway vehicle. We seem to be in the middle of a desert, so going on foot is out. I can't waste a single moment. Gina's life is in jeopardy. Let's get down to work. I 
tanning oil. Mariola, do you mind if I borrow your tanning oil? Sorry, sugar, that's my last blood. I still haven't acquired that bronze tone that turns macho men into love machine. Wow, what a sweet setup they've got here. Very chic. I like it. I see Carla's lying down in back. Hmm, I think it's the axle of the device that opens and closes the bus door. But it's strange. The crank that the driver uses to turn the axle is missing. It's interesting. There, let's just say stellar. Yeah, that's the word, stellar. It has a security closure system. You need a key to get it open. those typical prop trunks that actors and singers use. I think I'll take a look and see what's inside. A basketball! It's deflated and needs some stitching, but it might be of use. It looks like a handle to something, like a flashlight maybe. It wasn't a flashlight after all. It's a handheld vacuum. I know I can use this. It's full of lipstick. Well, I'll just grab whichever. I don't plan on using any myself but I might use it for something else. It's okay, I'm sure the girls have plenty. Maybe I'll show how thoughtful I am by giving them to Gina as a present. Excuse me, Carla? Yes, honey. You look exhausted. Utterly, darling. Listen, I was a bit indisposed when I woke up yesterday because of some stomach trouble. So I took a pill I keep just for these occasions. The trouble is, I forgot you can't mix the pills with alcohol because they knock you out. So I had a Turkish passion in the evening. I invented that nectar like delight, by the way. <laughs> Ooh, sister, you can't imagine what happened. It's like I was frozen in space. My graceful body seemed to weigh a ton. <gasps> Just horrid. I'm feeling a tad better today, but I'm still a bit peaked. I need to get some beauty sleep. Are you gastrically challenged? Well, look, they're just momentary bouts of pain. You know, once in a while, you overburden your system and uh, things go out of whack. 
I just happen to have a bit of heartburn. You wouldn't let me try one of those pills you take, would you? Darn, I just ran out. When I went to take one yesterday, there were only two left in the bottle. I took one and dropped the other one, which fell through that grating on the floor. And you say that if you mix those pills with alcohol, it knocks you out cold? Let me tell you, honey, that mix is a time bomb, and the effects last for hours. You mentioned the Turkish passion. What's in that? Oh, that's a woman's secret, my love. My delectable blends are renowned. The Turkish passion is one of my personal favorites, but I've created many more. There's the Gentle Frenzy, Black Autumn, Love Juice, Brandy Alexandra. Anyway, there's a million, and they'll all drive you wild. <laughs> I've seen that you keep your fridge under lock and key. Yeah, that's Lula and Mariola's doing. Those gossipy wenches accused me of eating uncontrollably and put that lock on the icebox. And you have no idea where the key is? No, I know it's hidden somewhere on the bus, but no matter how hard I look, I never can find it. I don't know where those anorexic vipers keep it. Have you tried opening it with a hairpin? It always works in the movies. Yeah, I've tried it all. With a screwdriver, too. And a nail file. But nothing seems to work on that damn lock. They haven't given you the key, have they? No, they are hell-bent on controlling me. Especially with the butter. Is it my fault if I can't resist bread and butter? I'll let you get some rest, Carla. See ya. Toodaloo, cutie! It looks like shoe repair thread. And there's a needle next to it. I'll take the needle, too. Maybe I can use it somewhere. I don't think Carla would like it much if I took her cocktail away. Besides, I've never tried strong mixed drinks. It might upset my stomach. I can't see anything from here, but the pill Carla dropped must be down there somewhere. Good idea. Maybe I can find the pill that Carla dropped. I'll open up the vacuum cleaner bag and see if Lady Luck is on my side. Bingo! Here's the pill. Okay, I'll try to stitch it. Well, that turned out better than I expected. It sure looks familiar. I'm certain I've seen you somewhere before. I don't think so. Unless you see me in one of our shows. But frankly, Big Boy, you don't seem like the type of guy that goes to the places where we usually act. Yeah, you're right. I must be mixing you up with someone else, but uh, I'd swear. Oh, whatever. Forget it. I don't want to interrupt your rehearsals anymore. Okay. There's someone over there. I'm afraid he's not one of the good guys. He looks like a buff type of guy that might shoot you in the back. He must be guarding that barn or something. I can't let him see me. Nothing like a cool brewski at this heat. I'll take a peek through that crack there. 
Inside is the chopper they used to bring us to this desert. Of course. Now I understand why that Lummox is there. They're using the barn as a hangar and he's guarding it. I'll enter through the rear window. Nothing like a cool brewski in this heat. It's a beer can. Excellent choice. If what Carla told me about the effects of the pill being mixed with alcohol is right, this guy will go out like a light fast, but it's impossible to do it without him noticing. I have to distract him somehow in order to stick the pill into the can behind his back. Made it. No one could beat me at this sport. Let's see if I can blow it up with this doohickey. It worked! You can't even tell where I stitched it up. Yeah, there's something to that idea. Maybe I can get Lula to admit who she really is and get her to distract the muscle man in the barn. Lula, come look. Hey, big boy. I didn't know you liked sports. Mm -hmm. Where did you get that basketball? Throw it to Lula. This is the ball from the first match I won my first title at. I knew it. Give up the act, sister. You're Lou LaMare, aren't you? And I see you can still work wonders with a basketball. Of course. I've still got the magic touch. Why do you think I was named most valuable player in the league three years in a row? Too bad that all went by the wayside when you messed up that last basket in the 95 finals, huh? It was a personal foul, for goodness sake. That vision impaired bad of a referee didn't see it. Those journalist leeches looked the other way. Everyone in the whole pavilion was blinded by my grandeur. But it was a personal foul. Okay, okay. Pipe down, Lou. I mean, Lula. That's all in the past now. Best not to stir up old memories. After all, who hasn't missed a basket at some point? When completely alone under the basket? while vying to win the NBA Finals? It really isn't that important. Dare you insinuate that there was no foul, hmm? No, of course not. Of course there was a foul. On purpose, too. What's important now is you gotta help me out by distracting that guy I told you about. Being who you are, you won't have any problem with a little competition hooping cans into a bucket, will you? I'm sure you'll beat him easy, and that way you can soften the uh, studly thing up a bit. All right, you win, but with two conditions. One, that all that hearsay about my past remains a uh, entree new. <laughs> I really want to protect Carla and Mariola from this. And two, um, well, look, ever since I missed, I mean, ever since that personal foul that kept me from making that basket in the finals, I've been drained of my self-confidence. I'll probably prance up to the sky, and I won't know what to say or do. So, you have to come along and talk for me. But that's impossible. I can't let him catch sight of me or he'll recognize me. 
He has to have seen me when they brought me in in the helicopter. Yes, I understand. Well, I've got it. Mm. Listen, dear, we have some of those cutesy little receivers you place inside your ear. They blend in entirely. We use them for some of our cabaret acts. Here's the plan. I stick it in, and you use a walkie-talkie to whisper my lines to me. Tell me you love the idea. I guess it's okay. Let's try it. Hey, who are you? What are you doing here? This is private property, so you better vacate the premises. Uh, well, you see, I, uh, didn't you say he was an Adonis? Calm down, Lula. Tell him you were just passing through, that you saw what nice hoops he was shooting into the tank, and that he's not bad. Well, as I said, I was passing along and saw you toss some cans at that tank. And I said to myself, ooh, this guy's pretty hot. <laughs> At basketball, that is. Pretty hot? Very hot, you mean? I don't think you'll come across anyone that can shoot hoops like me. Tell him you're not so bad yourself. Challenge him to throw from further away. That way, he'll get out of the way, and I can come right on in. Well, to tell you the truth, hot stuff, I can shoot baskets just as well as you can. And from even further away. <laughs> yeah, right. You must be joking, aren't you? You don't really think you can beat me. Follow me, if you dare, and I'll show you. I shouldn't leave my post, but Rocco Wallace is always willing to take on a challenge. I'll laugh my head off teaching this ditz a lesson. <laughs> anyway, I see there are quite a few empty cans around here. How about that? I have to admit, you ain't bad, uh, but I can do better. Watch I have to take advantage of this dog. nice moment of privacy to do Watch whatever I need hook. to do. Good shot. Watch this hook. Okay, Watch I can spike the beer now that dog. the gorilla's left his cage. There we go. I hope he finishes that can before opening another. I think he's coming back. Better take off so Biceps Boy doesn't find me and ruin everything at the last moment. Cross your fingers. Man, that last sip of beer was a killer. I think I'm losing it. I better have another drink. Congratulations, it worked. He is so tired he can barely move. Hey pal, what? Feeling drowsy, are we? What are you doing here, Pipsqueak? I don't know how you got out of the cabin, but uh, as soon as I wake up, I'm gonna grind you into hamburger meat. Uh, just wait for this dizzy spell to pass, and you're gonna get it. You're in no state to be threatening anyone, Mac. When you snap out of it, if you do, we'll be long gone. Okay, we can't waste a second. I'll go open the barn door. That chopper will get us all out of this dust bowl. Let's go over the plan again. We've got to get the thugs' attention so they leave the house. Then I can go in and untie Gina and we'll escape through the trap door. When those thugs go back inside the house and realize Gina and I are gone, we'll implement part two of the plan. Somehow locking the bad guys inside the cabin so they can't come after us. Last of all, part three is finding a getaway vehicle. We seem to be in the middle of a desert, so going on foot is out. And to get away, we can use the helicopter. Uh, don't really know who's gonna fly the thing. Uh, I can hardly move. Yum, peanut butter. All right, maybe it will be useful at some point. I better carry it with the lid on. Yeah, keep that jaw away from me. It's dangerous. 
dangerous? This mere little glass jar? And here I thought you were a tough guy. It's not the jaw that's dangerous, it's the wild ants in this area. Ants? Yeah, they go berserk over peanut butter. Listen, you're worse off than I thought. Think whatever you like, moron. See that wood left over behind there? It was a nice old rocking chair. A few days ago, I left a jar of peanut butter open on it. And when I came back a few hours later, the rocking chair was just as you see it now, with a million ants all over it. Yeah, whatever you say. That pain is no good. I can't really use it because it's all covered with paint. You better head straight for the cabin before Gustav and Theodore realize you ran away, weakling. It reminds me of one my dad used to have in the backyard. As a kid, I'd entertain myself by banging on it with a baseball bat. The truth is, I was a bit wild in those years. Don't I'm afraid I wouldn't get very far on it. the helicopter, or you'll regret it. Yeah, it'd be nice for me to relive old times and unleash some of that pent-up rage I hold within. It's very therapeutic, I assure you. It's one of the footrests from the motorcycle. It fell off when I hit it with the crowbar. I may be needing this. You better head straight for the cabin before Gustav and Theodore realize you ran away, weakling. That contraption will get us out of here, even if I have to fly it myself. I don't get it. What's happening to me? Yeah, I think they'll fit together somehow. Perfect! Now the lever's as good as new! It works! The door closed! It's a pocket of leather stuck to the door. I guess it's meant to hold the bus keys or something like that. see what's inside. A key. I bet I know what it's for. Let's see if I'm lucky. And this key is the one to the fridge. Well, let's see what we've got here. I'll grab the butter. Looks like Carla didn't even notice, but I locked the door again just in case. Alright, I might use it for something. It's closed. Just a bunch of old tires. It's quite an antique. It seems to be standing the test of time.
Wow, an oil well. It seems pretty old. I bet it's been running for years. I wonder how long it's been pumping away. Undoubtedly petroleum. I don't think that's a good plan. It's large and the shadow it casts provides a little shade from the sun. Sure, and afterward I can roll it straight toward the cabin where those thugs are. What could that little pebble weigh anyway? Four or five tons? I really think it's a waste of time. An airplane graveyard. And as far as I can tell, most of them are military aircraft from around the time of World War II, I'd say. It's a bit old, but it might save me from any other punches. It's in good shape, and I could actually use it if I find some bullets to fill it up. It's a little rusty, but I bet it might still work if I grease it up. No, that won't lube the machine gun. It's unbelievable how much combat planes have changed. Imagine the pilot's face if they put him at the controls of an F-18. Wow, looks like the railroad tracks come all the way up to here. Although judging by the look of that train car, the tracks must be from the 1800s. Danger, explosives. Why waste the energy? Empty. Hmm, there are probably some explosives left in there. Man, it is really stuck. Pretty rickety. I don't think it would hold the weight of a person. It's an old freight car. Let's see what's inside. Yuck! Ugh! It doesn't smell very good in here. It's chock full of screws. I think it's one of the ones they used to build the train tracks. No, I'm not going to take the whole bucket full, but I will take one screw. It's long, so it might be good for something. Just a bunch of useless thingamajigs. One is closed and the others are empty. I don't know. It must have tar or something like that inside. This barrel here is the only one that's closed. Let's see if I can get it open. I wonder what's inside. Peanuts. I wonder how long they've been in the barrel. It's rather long and has a hook at the end. I have no clue what purpose it'd serve. Besides, it'd be too hard to rip it off the wall of the train car.
XXX. No doubt about it, it's a barrel of gunpowder. It's too heavy. I'd be happy just to get a handful of that gunpowder out. But the barrel's closed up tight. The barrel is boxed in between all that junk in the back. The crowbar won't really get it out. Yeah, I think the top of the screw might fit right into the opening on the peg. Presto! They fit together so well that I'll never be able to pull them apart again. Sure, I can use this to drill a hole in the barrel, no problem, but I need something to pour the gunpowder into when it starts spurting out. Aha! Uh -huh. I'll place the bucket at the bottom of the barrel so the gunpowder falls in when I screw the hole into the barrel. I don't think that's a good plan. I've got it! I'll drill a hole in the barrel so the gunpowder falls out into the bucket. Sweet! Now the bucket's full of gunpowder. Cool. There's enough gunpowder here to last quite a while. I like that idea. Turning harmless lipstick into a high caliber bullet. Yeah! Here we go. I'll dab a little gunpowder on the base. Ready. No need to put any more gunpowder on it. Let's see how well it fits. Perfect! Now let's see if I can make some more bullets to finish filling up the belt. There are so many different colors. Yes, I'm taking them all. With all these, I can make a bunch of bullets. All right, with all this lipstick, I can make a hundred pursefuls of bullets. Ready, there was just enough gunpowder to fill up all the lipstick holders. All right, I'll fill up the bullet belt. They just slide in. Huh, what a coincidence. There's exactly the same number of bullets as empty slots. The idea of going back in there doesn't amuse me at all, but I guess I have to. It's a good thing I thought of sliding it over so I could uncover the trap door hidden beneath it. Hmm, well... Using the helmet as a pot to make peanut butter may be a bright idea, but uh, I think I should put the peanuts in last. Yeah! I can use the helmet as a pot to melt the butter.
Yes, the freezer lid is burning up, and I can use it to melt the butter. But first, I have to add the peanuts. Okay, I'll put the peanuts in. Great, now all I have to do is heat it up so everything melts together nice and smooth. And ta-da! I'll have whipped up a lovely batch of peanut butter. Good thinking. With the sun beating down on the freezer lid, it must be hot enough to fry an egg. Perfect for making that tasty peanut butter. Let's leave it on the burner a bit longer so that it melts into a smooth cream. I can use the spatula from the jar of real peanut butter to stir the mixture. Well, it's not real peanut butter, but I think it'll pass. And the color is certainly just like the real thing. Seems like a harebrained scheme, but why not? Can't hurt to try. Let's see. Let's see if those ants show any sign of life. Jeez! Unbelievable! This isn't happening. Wild beast! Absolutely amazing! They've munched up the shack into a pile of sawdust. Luckily, the things inside have remained intact. There's enough dynamite to blow this whole place up. I better walk carefully with this stuff on me. If I hadn't seen what those ants did, I wouldn't believe it. I think I'll keep my distance, just in case I'm giving off the aroma of that darn peanut butter. I wonder how long it's been pumping away. What for? It's bringing up black gold. Besides, it might tip the thugs off as to my whereabouts. Fine plan. If I choose the right moment to blow up the well, I can draw the goon's attention. Let's put the dynamite in place. The detonator goes behind this rock, which is perfect for protecting me from the blast. Let's go over the plan again. We've got to get the thug's attention so they leave the house. Then I can go in and untie Gina, and we'll escape through the trap door. When those thugs go back inside the house and realize Gina and I are gone, we'll implement part two of the plan. Somehow locking the bad guys inside the cabin so they can't come after us. Last of all, part three is finding a getaway vehicle. We seem to be in the middle of a desert, so going on foot is out. We'll grab their attention by blowing up the oil well at just the right time. It must have seeped out of the oil well. Hmm, yeah. I like the idea of tinting the lenses so it looks darker through them. Let's try. Done.
good idea. That way Mariola will think she has a darker tan. Careful, you better not notice. Mariola, do you mind if I borrow your tanning oil? Oh, all right, take it. I think I already have a luscious tan. Tell me, honey, don't you find me irresistible? Oh, yeah, you're uh, one hot babe with that tan. Thanks for the suntan oil. I don't plan on lying out in the sun, but I might need it for something else. It's not the best kind of oil to grease it up with, but it should work. Right, I think it'll work now. Let's see how that works. Perfect, the cabin is within shooting range. Well, here we go. A-okay. Now the machine gun is ready for firing whenever I might need it. Let's go over the plan again. We've got to get the thugs' attention so they leave the house. Then I can go in and untie Gina and we'll escape through the trap door. When those thugs go back inside the house and realize Gina and I are gone, we'll implement part two of the plan. Somehow locking the bad guys inside the cabin so they can't come after us. Last of all, part three is finding a getaway vehicle. We seem to be in the middle of a desert, so going on foot is out. We'll use the machine gun to keep them pinned inside the house. Everything is ready then. I'll go talk with the girls and put the plan in motion. Girls, listen to me. I've got something important to tell you. I have some good news and some bad news. Which do you want to hear first? Oh dear boy, start with the good news, please. I've cooked up the perfect plan to set Gina free and get us all out of here. I'll need a bit of cooperation on your behalf, but it'll be easy, so don't worry. So what about that bad news, darling? Well, uh, let's see. Do any of you know how to fly a helicopter? A helicopter? A helicopter? Mmm! Calm down, girls. It's no problem. Sergeant Hewitt reporting, sir! Reconnaissance pilot from the Bravo Division, sir! Windward Regiment, 2nd Battalion, Charlie, United States Marines, sir! You're a Marine? Oh, that's awesome, Carla! I would've never guessed. Very well then, there's no time to waste. Go get your things and take them to the chopper. Then I'll explain the details of the plan and tell each of you what your mission is. Oh, and one more thing. Remember that we're flying out on a helicopter that doesn't hold all the stuff you've got in the bus. Please, just take what you need. Oh, good thing you brought just the essentials. And hey, you don't expect us to be taking the bodybuilder along too, do you? He's really a nice boy, Brian. He just needs someone to set him on the right path. Us girls will take care of that. The poor guy just needs a chance in life. We'll give him just what he deserves. Okay, whatever you gals want. The important thing is this. Listen. First, we're going to cause an explosion in that oil well to distract the one-eyed guy and his sidekick. You're in charge of that, Mariola. Don't worry, it'll be simple. I've got it all planned out. You just have to activate the detonator and run to the helicopter, okay? And how will I know when to push the button? We'll use radio transmitters. You'll each be wearing one, and I'll give you instructions over the walkie-talkie. Lula, are there enough transmitters? Yes, sweetie pie. No problem. Mm, there are more than enough. Perfect, then. Lula, we'll be taking advantage of your excellent marksmanship, so use the machine gun I set up for you in the airplane graveyard. It's got a great clear shot to the cabin. If the plan goes off without a hitch, the oil well will blow up and those thugs will run out of the cabin to find out what happened, which is when I slip in and free Gina. All right, when the thugs go back inside, 
You'll start to shoot at the cabin to keep them from running after us, since they'll have realized that Gina's gone. Understood? Understood? It's going to be so much fun to slaughter those pigs, but... When do I make a run for the helicopter? Let's see. You'll still be too far from here, and you've got to give us cover while we retreat. Mariola, Gina, and I will be on board the helicopter. We'll take off and go pick you up at the plane cemetery. Okay, but don't forget about me. Calm down. Nobody's staying on land. Carla, you'll start up the engines as soon as Mariola gets back from the oil well, okay? Yoo-hoo! Carla! Huh? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I was just going over this flight manual. Flight manual? Carla, are you sure you know how to fly this bird? Why, of course. I was just reviewing certain concepts. I've got more in-flight hours than a bald eagle. And just about the same hairdo, you old hag. Your insides are just eaten up with jealousy. Come on, girls. Don't claw each other's eyes out. Carla, we have 100% faith in you. In our prayers, too. Mmm, this is so exciting, girls. I feel like I'm on Charlie's Angels. Okay, enough talk. Everyone get in position. Good luck to everyone. And to myself. Okay, let's make sure everything's set up. Hey, Ariola, are you in position? Oh, yes, of course. Ready. Okay, wait for my signal. Lula, are you ready? Ready when you are, and mad about going into combat. Perfect. Just stay alert, Carla. All set? In position, sir. Sergeant Hewitt, prepare for takeoff. Very good. You pay attention, too. A-okay. It's time. Let the party begin! Mariola, blow up that well! What in the world was that? Oh, man. They blew up the well. I don't like this one bit. We gotta call the Sandretti's. The girl's gone. Take cover! We're being ambushed! That's impossible, crazy broad. Fast, Lula! Climb on board! Careful with that plane, Carla! Come on, Carla! Get us out of here! Oh! Wait, what's the matter now? I broke a fingernail activating that damn detonator. What a getaway, huh? You can't deny it! It was amazing! The helicopter ride? Well, let's just say it was pretty intense. Carla hadn't piloted a plane for years, and... I admit my palms were a bit sweaty. But the important thing is that she got us to the part of Arizona where the Hopi people live. We thought we'd find more information on the weird crucifix there. Fortunately, I got the crucifix back along with the rest of my stuff when I went into the cabin to save Gina. And luckily the girls had all their wardrobe with them so they could lend Gina and me some clothes. We knew it'd be great to put on clothing better adapted to the part of the desert we were headed for. Be careful, you guys. You gals, too. And thanks for everything. I can't stand goodbye. I always cry like a baby. I promise. We'll go see your show as soon as we have time. You better stick to that promise if you don't want to piss off a marine cutie. Goodbye. Goodbye. See you soon. Goodbye, girls. I'll never forget you. We won't forget you either. Bye. Well, we're on our own. You got a problem with that? 
Being alone with me doesn't make you uncomfortable, does it? Ah, uh, of course not, silly. Hey, don't get mad. I was just kidding. Come on, let's not waste any time. Hurry up, let's find someone who knows about the Hopi Indians. Maybe we'll get lucky and run across an actual Hopi. I doubt it, but you never know. I saw a path behind here. Let's go. Wait, my bootlace came untied. I'll catch up with you. I'm gonna take a look from up there. Ah! Hey! Gina! 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 Answer me, Gina! No! No! Feeling sorry is not the answer. Hey! Who are you? I didn't hear you come up. I am Wupuchim, last of the Hopi cheats. The answer is to continue on your mission, not to feel sorry. How do you know all this? I don't understand how you... Hey, wait a minute. Did you say Hopi? I did, of course. That's incredible. We... I mean, I'm here to find out the meaning of a crucifix of Hopi origin. Show me the object. This is it. My young friend, this is not a crucifix. It is a sacred key. A key? But it's not shaped like a key. The way you are holding it in your hand, press strongly on the upper part with your thumb. Oh. Well, it sure looks like a key now. And what is it this sacred key opens? It is the key to the sacred Hopi crypt. The sacred crypt? And where is this crypt? Right across from our village, on the highest peak, on the other side of the Great Canyon, where Istorok places his first ray at dawn. Oh, and could you tell me how to get to the Hopi village? The sacred key went to you, so your destiny is to reach the sacred crypt. What path to follow? The path of knowledge, no doubt. Well, I think there's something I should tell you. You see, the truth is that this key... It's not my... Hey! He disappeared! Now how did he leave without me noticing? Just like when he came. Feeling sorry is not the answer, huh? That's easy to say. But I feel I can't move one step now that Gina's... Well, he's right. The only thing I can do for Gina now is continue on the mission that brought us here. I owe it to her. Now I know the crucifix is actually the key to a crypt. If I manage to find the Hopi village, I'll be able to enter that sacred crypt. 
and I'll probably find an explanation for this whole mystery there. So, let's hop to it. Great, I have a good view of the whole area from here. Let's see, it looks like there's a small town over there. I'll go see if I can find someone who knows about the Hopi village. Wow, this place looks like something out of a John Ford movie. You've got your hotel, your sheriff's office, the typical saloon from the Old West, and there's even an old derailed steam-powered locomotive at the end of town. Wait, stop, don't shoot. Who are you and what are you doing in my town? And put up your hand so I can see him. Hey, hold your horses. I've come in peace. Look, my name is Brian and I'm a bit lost around here. Can you help me out? Well, okay. I guess you're not lying. Come in and we can chat. So, you say you're lost, huh? Well, maybe you can tell me how you got here then. Well, the truth is, I'm not totally lost. I'm trying to find a Hopi village that used to be inhabited somewhere in this region. I came into this town hoping to find information on its exact location. Hmm, the Hopi village. Are you an archaeologist or something like that? No, I know nothing about archaeology. I need to find it for another reason. You don't look like an archaeologist to tell you the truth. Though I suppose they don't all carry whips and wear hats. Oh, give it a rest, please. Do you know where that Hopi village is or not? This may sound strange, but the history of this town, Douglasville, is very closely related to the history of that Hopi village. Really? In what way? Please explain. Well, it's kind of a long story. Okay, well, here it goes. This village was founded by my great-grandfather, James Theodore Douglas. He was the owner of a gold mine nearby. And in the beginning, Douglasville was nothing more than a mining camp. But it grew bit by bit until turning into a flourishing town. Everyone was prosperous thanks to the huge profits of the mine, and my great-grandfather even got the railroad to run through Douglasville. However, something happened that tragically changed the town's fate. The mine and the mine shafts just kept growing and growing until one of them, the one with the largest vein of gold, bumped into something totally unexpected. The Hopi Village! Really? So what happened? The inevitable. The Indians weren't willing to let white men ravage their lands. And J.T. Douglas wasn't the kind of man who would give up a fortune just because some Indians got in his way. So there was a bloodbath. It looked pretty bad for the Indians. They didn't have much to fight with, and a lot of them died. But then, something amazing changed everything. The Hopi tribe's medicine man came into Douglasville one morning at dawn, stood in the middle of town, and cast a terrible spell on it, the mine, and all the white men that might try to take over Hopi lands. They killed him on the spot but not before the curse took effect. What do you mean by that? What happened? The mine inexplicably ran out of gold overnight, and not one more nugget of gold was ever taken out. The people in town started to catch a strange disease that the doctor couldn't cure. Whole families were driven out of Douglasville in fear, trying to get away from the curse. The final straw was when the train derailed. It went out of control through the town, destroying everything in its path. Its last obstacle was the Douglasville Bank, which it plowed into like a wild buffalo. As you might suspect, J.T. Douglas owned the bank, too. That's where he was sitting in his fancy red French armchair brought in straight from Paris when 50 tons of iron flattened him. Once my great-grandfather had died, the few people left in town were hot on their heels to get out of Douglasville, making it a ghost town. That's a fascinating story. And you say... You're the great-granddaughter of this J.T. Douglas? Yes, I am. By the way, my name is Sushi. Sushi Douglas. And this town is really mine. The deed to it has been passed down from generation to generation until reaching me. And I was the first person to use it a year and a half ago. I came here to live with two friends, Kevin and Rutger. But up to then, it was completely abandoned. The three of you live here alone? No way! Wow, Sushi. I can see you're really informed about the history of the region. So, I bet you can indicate the way to the remains of the Hopi village, right? Well, actually I can't. The mine was sealed when all that stuff I told you about happened, and from the outside I have absolutely no idea how to reach the Hopi village.
So do you think I could get to the Hopi village by going through the mine? If you knew the directions to follow through the mine shafts, you surely could. Do you know your way through the mine shafts to reach the Hopi village? Me? Not a chance. I've never gone into that old mine. I thought you might have an old map of the mine. No, I don't have any maps of it. Let me think. I guess that if a map exists, it would be in the town bank. Probably inside the safe. Do you really think the mine ran dry because of the Hopi Medicine Man's curse? Well, I neither believe it nor deny it. What I do know is that the mine ran out of gold, even though such a thing seemed totally impossible days before. Not something very normal, don't you think? Why did Kevin, Wrecker, and you come live out here? It was my idea. I felt the need for total isolation so I could devote myself to my greatest passion. They had similar concerns. So here we are. So, what's your passion? Computers and the whole world of technology surrounding them. I'm pretty good at it, you know? I'm going to continue on my search. Thanks for all your help, Sushi. See you later. See ya, and good luck. Whoa! The bank sure is a mess! I see the locomotive really wrecked the place when it derailed and smashed into the bank. It's pretty old, but I bet it could be fixed. It's really old. Probably stopped working a long time ago. It'd make for a lovely decorative antique if someone cleaned it up. This is really run down. All I see are old papers covered in dust. Then there's that metallic object down there. Hmm. Not a clue what this is, but it seems to be in pretty good shape despite years of sitting on that shelf. Okay, I'll take it. Whoa, this looks like a stapler. Quite rudimentary it is. Definitely a model from the 19th century. I'd better take the staples that were lying next to the stapler. They look similar to the rivets used by cobblers. I bet this was J.T. Douglas's desk. I bet this was J.T. Douglas's desk. B.D. Bank of Douglasville, I suppose. A big piece of the floor is missing. A blunt object must have fallen down and made that hole. I don't see why I would want to go in there.
Let's see. Way at the end, I see a cell and... <gasps> I can't believe my eyes. There's... A dead body! Oh, man. That guy must have been rotting away for a hundred years. I wonder whether that poor devil died inside there, or if he'd already kicked the bucket before they stuck him in there. It's locked shut. It must be for that stove over there. All right. I don't think anyone will need them to light up the stove. Five nice logs. Hmm, might come in handy. There's still some old wanted signs up, offering a reward for capturing the bad guys. Well, I'm no bounty hunter. And even if I were, I'm afraid all of these guys have been six feet under for at least a century. There aren't any weapons left, just the chain that held them up. I can't. It's fixed to the cabinet. I don't think I'll need it anyway. An old frayed hat, a couple of pages from an old newspaper, and an oil lamp. Ah, uh, nothing of this will help me out. I'm not interested in that. This must have been a supply wagon, because it has some sort of strap attached to an iron ring at the edge. And there are more similar rings at each end of the wagon on both sides. I bet the strap passed through all of those rings over the goods to keep them from moving around on those dusty, bumpy old roads. It's tied to one of the iron rings. I can't tear it off. Okay, let's make a real clean Eastwood entrance. Hey, how cool. An automatic door opening system. And they say the Old West was wild and dangerous. Well, well, wow. This looks like a botanical garden. It's got dirt inside, but nothing has been planted in it. Okay. Maybe I'll find something to plant in it. Let's see what I find here. It's a sort of shed stocked with a wide range of gardening tools. Seeds, tools, chemicals, that kind of stuff. Let's see. Hmm, these pruning shears may be of use. Oh, it's one of those miniature trees that have become so fashionable. I think they come from Japan. Nice little tree, but I've heard it takes lots of time and energy to care for them properly. Mm-mm, better leave it where it is. I wouldn't be able to give it the love it deserves right now. Now, I'm not saying I don't like plants, but I can't waste any time watering them right now. Hey! Hey, pal! Hi, who are you? My name's Brian. Brian Basco. I'm Kevin, but everyone calls me Saturn. Nice to meet you, BB. BB? Those are your initials, right? I could just tell you go by BB right away. It was logical, what with your name. Well, to tell you the truth, uh, no one's ever caught. So tell me, BB, you planning on moving to these parts? Have you spoken with Sushi about this? What kind of artist are you? 
No, no, I, I don't plan on staying. I, I'm just passing through. Oh, well, that's something unusual, isn't it? I mean, not many people come around here just for the heck of it. Well, I'm trying to find the remains of a Hopi village. The old Indian village? Yeah, I've heard of it. Do you have any idea where exactly it might be located? Actually, I don't, which is odd because I'm quite familiar with the area. I often go out exploring to find raw materials for my inventions, and I've never come across the slightest sign of that Hopi village. Do you know of anyone who could tell me the story of that village? Hmm, let me think. I don't know. I think Sushi may have some documents from her great-grandfather. They might mention the Hopi village. Of course, Rutger hasn't got a clue. Although you never know. And, uh, Mama Dorita could know something. That story about Sushi owning Douglasville is true then, huh? Oh yes, the whole town belonged to her great-grandfather. Then it was passed down from generation to generation until Sushi inherited it from her father. I met Sushi on the internet through a chat room. We got along really well and became friends quite fast. When she proposed the idea of moving away to this town to live at peace with our creative spirits, well, I didn't think twice. I haven't met Rutger yet. Well, he's out of town. He told me he was going on an expedition in search of plants and roots. When you meet him, you'll see what a swell guy he is. He joined up with us to move out here so he could devote himself fully to his great passion, botanical gardening. What do you know about Mama Dorita? Well, I've only seen her on one occasion. I got her to give me an appointment to see if she could do something about my lack of inspiration. It didn't work. According to her, I lacked faith, but really, I didn't think swallowing a live spider bathed in coyote brains was going to solve my problems. Uh, that thing you're working on is totally interesting. This ensemble? I assure you it's not one of my best works. My inspiration hasn't been up to par lately, you know? I just don't seem to be getting any ideas. Listen, about the Hopi village I'm looking for? Yes, what is it? Do you know any descendants of the Hopis that live around here? No, not a one. Though, yes, wait. I remember that Rutger told me he found a Hopi Indian in the middle of the desert one day. He said it was a very old man covered with wrinkles who claimed to be the last of the Hopi chiefs. But knowing Rutger, I wouldn't be surprised if he'd hallucinated the whole scene. This workshop's impressive. I see that besides an artist, you're quite an inventor. Yes, I like to think of myself as a modern-day Leonardo da Vinci. I combine art and science in my creations, because both combined are my whole raison d'etre. I'll let you get back to your work, Saturn. Au revoir! Adieu! The tank is pretty large. It must hold at least 50 gallons. What is this thing? Maybe it's some sort of scale. Or perhaps a cart for moving heavy items. I really can't tell. It forms part of that apparatus. Maybe it's some kind of brake. Let's see how in the world this works. Whoa! Hey, what have you done? Get your hands off my catapult. Sorry, I didn't know what it was. Well, the next time you don't know what something is, don't touch it. You wasted a whole unopened bucket of paint. Damn the day I decided to build that catapult. Hey, chill out, dude. I won't touch anything else. I hope not.
Hi, Sushi. Hi, Brian. How's it going? Did you find out anything else? Um, I'm working on it. You see, there's something I want to talk to you about. Shoot. It's about your great-grandfather's mine. Sure, what is it? Do you know your way through the mine shafts to reach the Hopi village? Me? Not a chance. I've never gone into that old mine. Well, forget about the mine for a minute. Whatever. It's about the safe in the bank. What about it? I've been sifting around the ruins of the bank and I didn't find it anywhere. Yeah, well, it wasn't on the upper floor. I believe it was in the basement of the bank. You know, to be on the safe side. The bad thing is, the way into the basement was completely blocked when the locomotive crashed into the building. Hey, there's a dead body inside of a cell in the sheriff's office. Yeah, it's been there for over a century. Who was it? The town doctor. Apparently, he was a drunkard, and a kid died because of him. He was in jail waiting for his trial when the train derailed. Don't you think you should take him out and bury him properly? Well, the door was locked, and the way I look at it, that cell is the closest that guy ever got to a grave. I don't think it'd do any good to bury him at this point. And that cell is kind of like having your own pantheon. How could they let him die there in such a cruel way? The sheriff had a key to the cell, and he also died the day the train derailed. Legend has it, someone warned everyone that the train was speeding toward the town out of control with nobody at the helm. The sheriff rode out to where the train was and managed to climb into the driver's cab of the locomotive, but a stroke of bad luck made him fall into the boiler. The guy was burned up alive and failed to stop a train. And as I already told you, due to the derailment, everyone fled town, and nobody even thought about releasing the drunk doctor who had caused the death of a child. Back up a bit. Yes? I'm going to continue on my search. Thanks for all your help, Sushi. See you later. See ya, and good luck. Wow! That crater is really big. Jeez! Someone's camping down there, right at the edge of the crater. I'll go down and see who it is. Hello? Hey, friend. Hi. Yo! Nah! It's impossible! I can't get them to open the door! Them? Who are they? Them! You know! Extraterrestrials! Oh, yeah. Huh. Speaking of which, who are you and what are you doing here? Are you looking for them, like me? No, no. Uh, my name's Brian and I'm searching for an old Indian village. Brian? You know the meaning of that name? No, I don't. What is it? I haven't a clue. But my name is Joshua. And it means liberation. That's something to think about, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Uh, that's real interesting. I know. Well, now that I think about it, they must have sent you here to help make my communication machine work. Really, my friend? No one sent me. Just because you're not conscious of it doesn't mean they didn't bring you here. Either I'm way off here, or just a few days ago, you never would have imagined you'd be here at the foot of this crater, right? Well, that is true, but it's all because of... So, I was right. See? That's how they do things. That's something to think about, isn't it? You wouldn't know where I can find the remains of that Hopi village I'm looking for, would you? The Indian village? No, I don't have the slightest clue. But as soon as I communicate telepathically with Trantor, I can ask. These aliens know everything. So what brought you here, to this crater, I mean? This is not just any crater. People just blindly believe whatever those so-called modern scientists tell them. They say that the crater was formed by a crashing meteorite that fell here millions and millions of years ago. That's a bunch of baloney, I say. However, I know the truth. 
The crater was formed when a Trantorian ship landed here. You know, that's what you told me when I arrived. Yeah? What? What door were you referring to when you said you couldn't get them to open it? To the dimensional door between Earth and Trantor! That's why they came here that time they landed with their spacecraft. They're setting up dimensional doors on hundreds of planets all over the universe. And the one on Earth is right here. A total trip, huh, dude? What is the communication machine exactly? It's all this stuff I have set up on top of the trailer. I built it myself and christened it with the name Communication Machine because I plan on using it to open the dimensional door and come in physical contact with the Trantorian. Why did you tell me to help you make it run? Is it broken? Yeah, after getting here and setting everything up, I ran into some bad luck. It had hardly been running for an hour when the machine ran out of energy and stopped working. I took off the plate covering the rotor and checked out the battery that makes it spin. But I can't find what's wrong. The battery looks like it's in one piece. I just don't get it. All I can tell is that if the rotor doesn't spin, it doesn't produce energy. And without any energy, the machine is useless hunk of junk. How can I help you make the communication machine work? Hmm, I'm not sure. The thing is, we need energy for the machine, and the energy is produced when the rotor spins. How does the machine work exactly? Basically, the machine is a sort of amplifier that can emit sounds at a specific frequency. It has a keyboard attached with seven buttons to play the seven musical notes. Using my telepathic contacts, I have been told that a way to activate the dimensional door is to play a combination of five notes at a frequency revealed only to me. Pretty fascinating, isn't it? What's that panel of spotlights behind there for? Each spotlight goes with one of the musical notes. When you play the note, the matching spotlight turns on. But the truth is, they don't really do anything. What I mean is, you don't need them to activate the dimensional door. But I saw something like them in a movie, and I thought the communication machine looked much more hip with them. What's that strange device you're wearing on your head? You mean my telepathic helmet? It's a telepathic empowerment device that multiplies a human being's telepathic abilities two or three thousand fold. I use it to communicate with Trantor. You got to be careful. When you wear this, you run the risk of going crazy because a lot of ideas flash through your brain. There are millions of telepathic messages people give off all the time without realizing it. Fortunately, I can clearly distinguish telepathic messages from Trantor and run no risk of losing my marbles. Well, I'll let you get back to work. We can talk later. Whenever you want, kid. Nice device. It's one of those dirt bikes that'll go just about anywhere. This model's a bit outdated. People use those igloo-style tents nowadays. I don't think Joshua would be pleased about me getting into his camping tent. And to tell you the truth, I'd rather not upset such a nutcase. Okay, I'll cut right next to the iron ring. That way I'll get most of the whole strap. It must be six to eight yards long. I'm sure it'll come in handy.
Yeah, I believe the idea might work, but first I have to find a way to join the ends of the strap. Of course! I can use the stapler to join the ends of the belt together. There we go. I only had three staples, but I think it'll hold. Joshua? Yes? I came up with an idea to make your communication machine work. Seriously? That is excellent! Explain it to me, boy. Look, I thought you could place a strap between the back wheel of the motorcycle and the rotor of your machine. Afterward, we rev up the motorcycle's engine and put it into gear. The wheel will pull on the strap as it spins and... Oh yes, I understand now. Great idea, young man. You're not as dumb as you looked after all. Just one thing. Do you have that strap? I've got it. You'll put it in place, won't you? Oh yes, that is right up on my alley. Just leave the strap next to the motorcycle and I'll do it in five minutes. The thing is, right when you talked to me, I had just tuned in a telepathic message from Trantor that I simply must decipher before I forget it. Ah, uh, as you wish. But don't take too long. Well, let's hope he can get this show on the road. I'm dying to check whether my idea works. No, I'd better not interrupt his, uh, telepathic conversation. I should just leave him alone so he'll finish as soon as possible and put the strap in. Hmm. This house looks Mexican. And there's a huge guy in the doorway. I don't know. He seems to be keeping guard. But he looks like a nice guy. I'll go talk to him to see what happens. Howdy, partner. What brings you to these parts? What do you want from Mama Dorita? Mama Dorita? No, look, I, I'm searching for the remains of a Hopi village. I know it was around this area somewhere. By the way, my name is Brian. An Indian village? Yeah. Hopi to be exact. Well, I reckon there's an old ghost town called Douglasville, and now there's a bunch of hippies living there. No, I've been through there already. Douglasville is not the town I'm looking for. Thanks anyway, though. Well, pal, I never heard of any other abandoned villages around here. You think Mama Dorita could help me? Sorry, but I doubt it. Mama Dorita helps people with other types of problems. Other types of problems? Yeah, she's... In contact with the other side. The other side? You mean she talks to dead people? Yup. She's mastered the arts of voodoo, soothsaying, and santeria. And she's a healer, too. I'd love to meet her. Maybe she might know something about the Hopi village. No way. Mama Dorita doesn't do that kind of thing. Look for a good archaeologist, pal. Oh man, I see Joshua hasn't put the strap in place yet. I'm gonna have to talk to him. Joshua? Yes? How come you haven't put the strap in place yet? Look, there is one small problem. Logically, I can't put in the strap without taking apart the motorcycle wheel. And I can't take apart the motorcycle wheel because I need a number 10 wrench, which I don't have. Oh brother, now I get it. I've been such an idiot. I shouldn't have joined the ends of the strap until I put it on the wheel. The bad thing is, I can't cut the strap again and re-staple it, since it'd be too short. What's worse, I don't have any staples left. Okay, Joshua, don't worry. I'll get us a number 10 wrench and bring it to you. Okay, I trust you, sonny boy.
a Saturn. What? You see, mon ami, there's something I wanted to ask you. If it's in my power to help. Could you lend me a number 10 wrench? Sure. Take it from the set of tools hanging on the wall. I'll let you get back to your work, Saturn. Au revoir. Adieu. Nice set. Yes, sirree. Let's see. Here on the left are the wrenches. Shoot, just the one I need is missing, the number 10. Hey, Saturn. What's up now, BB? The number 10 wrench is missing. Impossible, it's gotta be. Hey, wait, you're right. I used it before and left it here in my pocket. Here. Kid, your reflexes are shot, you know? Well, don't worry. The wrench must be down there, in the street. You just have to go down and get it. Yeah. Thanks, man. I don't see the wrench anywhere. Ugh, I'm afraid I figured out where it is. It's fallen into that disgusting trough. Okay, who's the sucker that's gonna stick his hand in there? Rotten luck. The wrench fell right into that spot. Sorry but I'll have to find some other way to get that out of there, because I am not sticking my hand in. This is a small town. Just one wide road lined by buildings on both sides and a couple of small side streets between them. It's a sanding block. Kevin. I bet Kevin doesn't know it's here and has been looking all over for it. All right. Better not leave it lying there. I'm sure Kevin will be grateful if I return it to him. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll drop the pot on the trough, and with a bit of luck, the wrench will come flying out. I can't tell if it worked from up here. I need to go down and check. Great! There's that dumb wrench! It's finally mine! All clean and ready to take to Joshua.
Joshua? Yes? I've got the number 10 wrench. Oh, excellent. Leave it by the strap. I'll take care of it right away. But give me five minutes. I was just receiving a telepathic message from Trantor. Oh, all right, whatever. Okay, let's hope Joshua puts my plan into action. Great, now the strap is on. Joshua? Yes? I see you put that strap on. Did you see if the invention works? Sorry, kid. We are out of luck. The motorcycle doesn't have one drop of gas left. Just what I needed. <laughs> Wait, let's not get desperate. We can find some gasoline. That's what I like to see. Initiative. I know you will get it. And with your help, I'll achieve my goal. Friend. What's up, kid? I see you like gum. You're always chewing some. Oh, that's not gum. It's menthol chewing tobacco. I can't resist it, you know. Helps me pass the time. What did you do before working for Mama Dorita? Well, I don't like to think about my past. All I can tell you is that I'm not real proud of some of the things I did. Luckily, Mama Dorita came into my life like a shining light and gave it all new meaning. Now my only mission is to serve Mama Dorita. I'd like to see Mama Dorita. I told you that can't be. She can't help you with your problem, pal. I'm sorry. When you have other troubles, the ones Mama Dorita can fix up, don't you hesitate to come around. Well, I'll just go on my way here. All right, me too. I wonder what that's for. I may be needing this. It's made of clay, and it looks handmade by a local craftsman. It's old, but it seems strong and sturdy. That doesn't seem like a very good idea to me. Besides Mama Dorita's name, there's a... I'm not sure. It's got an insect painted on it or something like that. By the look of that bucket, I'd say it hasn't been used for quite a while. Well, well, isn't that unusual? It's got a hole in the middle, like a donut. Okie dokie. I like it. You'd think it was the work of an artist and not just a rock I happened to find on the ground. By the look of that bucket, I'd say it hasn't been used for quite a while. No thanks. This really improves the ambiance, just like that shrunken head on the pole. After all, Mama Dorita is some sort of sorceress, and any self-respecting sorceress would decorate her place with this kind of stuff.
Hey, Saturn! What? You see, mon ami, there's something I wanted to ask you. If it's in my power to help. Can I take that tank you've got over there? It's filled with gasoline, isn't it? Yes, it's gasoline, but I'm afraid I can't give it to you. You see, when we came to this town, we agreed on a set of rules. One was that we didn't even want to hear about money. Nobody buys or sells anything here. What we do is use the noble old system of bartering. If you want something of mine, you have to give me something of yours in exchange. If what you want is a loan of something that's not perishable, no problem. We're just as generous as the next guy. But if it's something you can't return because using it means it will disappear, well, in that case, you have to give something in exchange. And I don't think I have to tell you that's the way it'll work with that tank of gasoline. Okay, I get it. And what might I offer you in exchange for your tank of gas? Hmm, look. One thing has occurred to me. You could give me a piece of art you've made. I love collecting works by other artists, you know. It's quite enriching. I'll let you get back to your work, Saturn. Au revoir. Adieu. All right, I don't want to give it up, but maybe I can get Saturn to exchange it for the tank of gas. Saturn. Hey Saturn, I brought you a first-rate work of art. It's a small sculpture I've carved in stone. Hmm, what does it portray? What does it portray? Uh, well, it's, uh, it, it portrays the fragility of, of mankind and the savage environment that surrounds us. Oh yeah, that's what I thought. It's a lovely piece and I hate to lose it, but I'd give it to you in exchange for the tank of gas. Well, I really understand the concept and all, and I like it, but it seems like an unfinished work, like a diamond in the rough. Work on it a bit more and we'll talk. Whatever you say, you're the big artist. Shoot, it didn't work. Yeah, if I can polish the stone, then maybe Saturn would consider trading it for the tank of gas. It's worth trying. Well, it certainly looks a lot nicer. Let's hope Saturn thinks the same. Okay, let's see if I can get him to trade it for the tank of gas. Saturn! I fixed up the sculpture a bit, and now I think you're really going to be delighted with it. How's this? Museum quality, huh? Hmm, yes. I can distinguish some softer nuances. The man has evolved. His delicacy in the surrounding environment is apparent. But he's trying to camouflage himself by blending in with progress. That's the idea you're trying to convey, am I right? That's exactly it. You understand my ideas perfectly. So, are you interested in it? You can have the sculpture, and I take your gas tank and... No. It still appears to be an incomplete work, like a house without a roof. When you achieve total mastery, we'll talk about the deal. Oh, all right, that's fine. This guy's one hard egg to crack. All right, I don't want to give it up, but if the piece of amber fits in the hole, it might be just what I need to give the stone a more artsy look. Let's try it out. Now it looks really cool. Saturn's really gonna like it now. Okay, let's see if I can make the deal this time around. Saturn. Observe my sculpture now. Thanks to your advice, I think I've created a true masterpiece. What do you think? Oh, the light. The divine elements symbolized by light, of course. In spite of it all, man cannot bear his fragility and needs to create a superior being that gives greater meaning to his existence. That is the point, isn't it? Exactly! You figured it out! Do we have a deal? Hmm. Do one thing for me. Place the sculpture in front of the door to the balcony. 
the sun will become the final element from which man imbibes the light that shelters him. Uh, whatever you say. Yes, truly majestic. Don't move it. That's the perfect spot. Okay, then I get the take of gas, right? Yes, yes, it's yours. Oh, but there's one thing I forgot to tell you. That isn't any normal, everyday gasoline. It's concentrated gasoline that I make myself. In order for it to work, you have to mix it with water. The formula is simple. For every liter of water, you put in 40 cc's of concentrated gasoline. It is vital for the mixture to be exact. Yeah, and do you have any measuring tubes to calculate the exact amounts? Well, look, there's one small problem. My 40 cc measuring tube broke the other day, and I haven't bought a new one yet. But don't worry, next to the gas tank, there's a one liter bottle and tooth measuring tubes. You can use that to make the mixture. If you say so. The tank is finally mine. And the bottle and measuring tubes? Let's see if I can use this to make the mixture right. The 50 cubic centimeter measuring tube is empty. Okay, I'll fill it right up to the mark. There you go, 50 cubic centimeters of concentrated gasoline. Done, without spilling a drop. It's empty now. Done, without spilling a drop. Okay, I'll fill it right up to the mark. There you go, 50 cubic centimeters of concentrated gasoline. Excellent, now I have exactly 40 cubic centimeters. It's empty now. The tank is pretty large. It must hold at least 50 gallons. I'd rather ask Saturn whether I can have his water. Hey Saturn. What? You see, mon ami, there's something I wanted to ask you. If it's in my power to help. Can I take a bit of water from the machine? Go ahead, you can't say no to giving someone water. Take all you need. I'll let you get back to your work, Saturn. Au revoir. Adieu. All right. To the mark, exactly one liter of water. Okay, it has just the right dosage, so there shouldn't be any problems. Perfect, now I've got gas for the motorcycle.
Alrighty then, let's fill that tank and see if we can finally implement my plan. Ready. I'll tell Joshua the motorcycle's prepared. Joshua? Yes? The motorcycle has gas now, so let's put the plan in motion. Stupendous! I knew you would not let me down! Let me tell you what we're going to do. I'll take care of starting up the motorcycle. As soon as the wheel starts spinning, go up to the switch on the communication machine. Okay? Yeah, sure. Okay, then go stand by the switch. It works! Amazing! We did it, young man. I knew my idea with the strap would work. Hey, it was my idea. Hey, let's forget about that. Now I need you to help me figure out the combination to open the dimensional door. I need you, kid. Don't fail me now! Well, all right. What do I have to do? Look, I discovered that the spot where I achieved the greatest telepathic communication is down there, in the middle of the crater. I'll go down there, and you push the keys for the musical node. That way, I will receive telepathic signals, which will indicate to me whether the combination is correct or not. The only thing that you must remember is that the combination is made up of five different nodes. You understand this, don't you? You cannot repeat the same note twice in any combination either. Got it. Different sets of notes, but without repeating any note twice in a combination of five notes. You are one smart little whippersnapper. Come on, Trantor's people are expecting me. Ready, hit it, Sonny. There's an intense light covering the center of the crater. I can't see Joshua. Brian, this is unbelievable. Just amazing, kid. It's remarkable. Farewell. You can't believe all the love I'm taking with me. But what's going on? That strange noise stopped and the light disappeared. But I can't find Joshua anywhere. I'm going down into that crater to see what happened. Unbelievable. The only thing Joshua left behind is that black mark on the ground in his telepathic helmet. Oh well, I don't think we'll be seeing Joshua again. I hope wherever he may be, he's resting in, uh, well, that he found what he was looking for. All right, Joshua won't be needing it any longer. The truth is, I doubt this contraption really improves anyone's telepathic powers, and I don't plan on wearing it to test the theory. Wow, the communication machine stopped working. Well, I suppose the motorcycle used up all the gas. This model's a bit outdated. People use those igloo-style tents nowadays. Okay, I don't think Joshua will care anymore. Let's see what I find in here. Yeah, this could be really useful. A flashlight that you can attach to your head and a climbing rope. the mind that killed Gina. And right when I was starting to... Well, let's not think about that. I've got to concentrate on solving this mystery. I owe it to Gina. If I could move that stone away from the entrance, I 
might find the Hopi village through the mine. That is one big rock. I can't get it to budge an inch. It's got one of those manual drive systems. Too bad the wheel is broken. It won't work. I suppose they used to store the mining tools in that, but it's empty now. It's an oil can. A bit heavy, but it may be of some use to me. It looks pretty deep. I can't see to the bottom. Impossible. There is a ladder, but most of the steps are broken. I could try to lower myself down on the rope, but... To tell you the truth, I think it's too late already. Hey, Saturn! What? You see, mon ami, there's something I wanted to ask you. If it's in my power to help. Hey, those enormous rocks you use for your stone sculptures. How do you manage to bring them here? Do you have some sort of moving crane? No, it's much simpler than that. I get the help of Oscar, Mama Dorita's disciple. He's amazingly strong and can move stones that weigh hundreds of pounds all by himself. In exchange for helping me with that, I give him menthol chewing tobacco that Rutger whips up for me. That big powerhouse just loves to chew tobacco, you know? I'll let you get back to your work, Saturn. Au revoir! Adieu! Saturn! I found the answer to your inspirational crisis. Really? What is it? It's a helmet that creates ideas. It stimulates brain activity in an incredible way. You'll see. It'll make hundreds of ideas pop into your mind. Here. Put it on. Let's see. Yeah, I can feel something. Oh. I've never felt so amazingly inspired in my whole life. I've got to sculpt what will be my greatest work ever. I'm going out right now to get the perfect stone. Thanks, Brian. I really owe you one.
No problem, man. And good luck! Now how about that? In the end, it'll turn out that the helmet actually works. Anyway, I hope Saturn doesn't become like Joshua. Okay, Saturn owes me one anyway. It's very light. I thought it would weigh more. Okay. Ready! It's filled to the brim with water. Ah, yeah! These dried tobacco leaves could really come in handy. I can't imagine the havoc that locomotive wreaked the day it derailed and annihilated everything in its path. Huh. Reminds me of a model I got for Christmas one year. Yep, it's almost exactly alike. There's the smokestack, and to the left is a spout where you fill the water tank, and further to the left is the whistle next to the engineer's cab. It whistles by letting steam out. It was hooked up to the engineer's cab using a sort of rope that he would pull on when he wanted to sound it. That's where you put water into the tank. I love those big smokestacks on old steam trains from the 1800s. Okay, I'll empty the oil can into the tank of the locomotive I'd need to fill the oil can with water first. Okay. Ready. It's filled to the brim with water. There we go. Let's fill that tank up a bit more. Okay. Ready. It's filled to the brim with water.
there we go. Let's fill that tank up a bit more. Okay. Ready. It's filled to the brim with water. There we go. Let's fill that tank up a bit more. Okay. Ready. It's filled to the brim with water. There we go. Let's fill that tank up a bit more. I could try to go in through the hole next to the broken part of the roof, but I'd almost rather go up to the side and enter through the window there. Okay, let's see what's in here. It has no firewood or other fuel inside. It doesn't need to be open to put fuel in. It has a hole where you can do that. Well, all right. These logs will make first class fuel. Yes, now is the time. Careful there, I don't want to burn my hand off. Okay, this is starting to work. That's the wheel used to increase pressure in the boiler. Okay, I'll turn the wheel once. I don't want to overdo it with the pressure and make the boiler blow apart while I'm in here. Great! Now I think there's enough pressure. I think that's the lever that activates the steam outlet. Yes, a burst of steam blasted out. I think with one big leap, I can reach the window. It must have flown out with the steam through the locomotive smokestack. And from the look of it, I bet I know what key it is. I hope the heat from the boiler didn't deform it.
I hope the locomotive boiler didn't deform it and it still works. Wonderful, it opened right away. No matter how bad a doctor he was, nobody deserves to die like that. It stinks like this place, but it's in pretty good shape. I don't think I'll take it. If I carry it around, people will think it's me that reeks. I should look around anyway, though, in case there's something I might need. I'll take this bottle of liniment. Hmm, it contains mint. The truth is, unless absolutely necessary, I'd rather not take anything from here. All that's left is a skeleton, which is why it's odd that the thing stinks so bad. Ew! Maybe there's a colony of worms living inside its clothing. Hey, Oscar. What's up, kid? I need your help. What can I do for you? Well, it's a huge rock I need moved. Sorry, guy. Oh, shucks. Well, I'll just go on my way here. All right, me too. Yeah, that way I can prepare menthol chewing tobacco but I'll need some sort of crushing tool to grind the tobacco leaves so I can mix them with the liniment. Put tobacco leaves into the bowl? Yeah, maybe I'd better, but later. Sure, great idea. The stamp is pretty large and durable. I can use it with the bowl to create a makeshift mortar and pestle. There we go. I think it'll work. Yes, I think I can use the mortar I've improvised to mash the tobacco leaves in with the liniment. Then I'll have menthol chewing tobacco. Let's try it. Okay, I think that turned out pretty good, but uh, there's no way I'm trying it. Oscar, brought you some of that chewing tobacco you love so much. Really? Of course, partner. Here you go. Thanks a lot, Brian. No sweat, man. That's what friends are for. And we are friends, aren't we? Of course we are. I needed that tobacco like a lost man needs water in the Mojave. Cause the last shipment Saturn brought me was running out. I owe you one. Now I've got him wrapped around my little finger. Friend! What's up, kid? I need your help. What can I do for you? Well, it's a huge rock I need moved. Well, of course. I love doing favors for my friends. Wonderful. Let's go. So this is the rock I gotta move, huh? Yeah, it must weigh a ton. You think you can push it out of the way so I can enter the mine? This little marble? Of course, partner. Piece of cake. There you go. Is that okay? That's perfect, Oscar. Thanks, pal. You're strong as an ox. No problem. I like doing favors for my buddies. I'm out of here. I gotta mosey back to Mama Doritas in case she needs me. All right, guy. Thanks a lot and see you around. Happy trails. And be careful if you're planning on going down that old mine. That Oscar. What a nice guy. I'm glad he's on my side and not somebody else's. I'm not going in there without a map of the mine. 
I'd probably get lost in a maze of tunnels and would never get out. It's undoubtedly the bucket of paint I launched with a catapult. No, I'd get paint all over me. Anyway, it's totally empty and won't do Saturn any good if I return it to him that way. It's used to control the crane located on the central beam in the ceiling. Okay, let's take advantage of the fact that Saturn's out. After all, what you don't see can't hurt you. Here's the deal. I'll move the statue onto the catapult. There we go. Now let's lower it down carefully. Perfect! Now it's placed right where I want it on the catapult. Alright, I hope the statue lands in the same spot as the paint bucket. Let it fly! There we go! I hope Saturn doesn't miss the statue. Just what I was expecting. A hole has opened up in the floor leading to the basement of the bank. Here we go. I can use the statue as a ladder. Good. I've made it into the basement of the bank, which is where the safe is located, like Sushi said. It's used to enter the combination that unlocks the safe. Okay, here's the antique safe. Now, let's see who can guess the combination. It won't be that easy to come up with a combination just like that. Hi, Sushi. Hi, Brian. How's it going? Did you find out anything else? Um, I'm working on it. You see, there's something I want to talk to you about. Shoot. It's about the safe in the bank. What about it? Tell me you know the combination to open it. I can't tell you I know it, because it isn't true. But I do know a thing or two about safes. There have been a lot in my family. So let me think. Hmm, a safe from the second half of the 1800s. Probably a Winchester. I'd say, almost for sure, that the combination is made up of three numbers, 
and to select the first one, you have to turn the dial to the right. At least it's something, isn't it? I'm going to continue on my search. Thanks for all your help, Sushi. See you later. See ya, and good luck. Okay, let's take one more peek to see what I can find. Yeah, this stethoscope might be good to have. Yeah, great idea. That always works in the movies. Here we go. Okay, I guess I'll turn the dial slowly, number by number, so I don't miss the right one. I need to pay close attention to the sounds I hear every time the dial moves. was obviously the mechanism falling into place. So the first number in the combination is 85 right. Now, I should turn the dial to the left to figure out the second number. Yes, I've got it! 29 left. Right. Cool. I think the door will open now. Let's see what I can find inside of this thing. Well, there are piles of old documents and a map of the mine. Finally, I found it. Let me look it over. Excellent. The site of the Hopi village is marked. With this map, I'll be able to get through the mine shafts and find my way there. Even if I end up having to re-enter the combination, I think it'd be better to close the safe. All right, I've got everything I need to walk around the mine shafts until I find the Hopi village. Let's go in. I hope I get lucky for once. What can I tell you? Getting over the loss of Gina was really hard. Only one thing kept me going. My strong determination to unravel the whole mystery surrounding the crucifix, which ended up being the key to a sacred crypt. I wasn't too concerned about having to get through that old mine, since I've always loved spelunking. But I wasn't aware of the unpleasant surprise waiting for me in one of the chambers. Hey! I see some light over there. Although, according to the map, that's not the exit leading to the Hopi village. Well... I'll take a look anyway. Maybe I can get to the village somehow from outside of the mine. 
Plus, I'm tired of wearing this darn flashlight on my head. Man, finally. I couldn't wait to take that off. Hey, what is this? Oh no! I can't stand those disgusting beasts! Ah! Bats! No! Help! Hmm. I think that's the Hopi Village down there. Eureka! I finally found it! It's not gonna be easy to climb down there. The mountain is really steep. The fall would kill me. It must have been a beam used to hold up the mine shafts. Okay. The wood is in pretty good shape. I might be able to use it. Look what was hidden under the wood. It must be some kind of mining tool, but the handle's missing. All right. It might be useful to me if I find a handle to put on it. I didn't even notice it when I came running out of the mine. No doubt it's one of James Douglas's miners, killed at the hands of the Hopis. I don't like the idea. It's like grave robbing, but I don't have a choice. A bone might be just what I need. This femur has a little part broken off. I think it's just what I'm looking for. Yeah, I think the femur could make a stupendous handle. Cool, it stays on nice and tight. Surely this is the work of the Hopis. Ugh. I hate those filthy bats more than any other creature in the world. It's not nailed in very well. There's a piece sticking out of the wood. No way I can do that with my fingers alone. Okay, I'll take out the nail. It's pretty long, but it might come in handy. It's right at the edge of the cliff. It's too heavy for me to move. You won't get anywhere doing that. All right, I'll nail it into some hard ground so it'll hold tight. Ready, I think it'll hold up. You won't get anywhere doing that. Come on, the rope has to be well attached to the nail. Ready, and now let's do some rock climbing. No problem, I was quite the climber at summer camp. Gina! Brian! I can't believe it! You're alive! How did you get here? Long story. When I fell down that hole, I hit my head and passed out. I don't know how much time passed before I woke up. When I came to, it was totally dark. My leg was throbbing. I dragged myself on hands and knees through the mine shafts, trying to find a way out. Finally, when I thought I was about to faint, I reached a shaft with light. I could see the sunlight at the end of the tunnel, so I got a second wind and forced myself toward it. When I came out of the mine shaft, 
The first thing I found was that huge statue back there, and I was scared stiff. But I regained my composure and passed through all those weird ruins until coming here. I couldn't believe I was stuck in the middle of a rocky canyon with a broken leg. In all truth, I thought my life was over. And that's right where you showed up. Oh, Brian, I've never been so happy to see someone. But tell me, how did you manage to find me? Well, actually, I came across you by accident. After you fell down that terrible hole, I gave you up for dead. But I swore to solve the mystery of the crucifix. That's what brought me here. These ruins are from a Hopi village. And on the other side of this canyon must be the sacred crypt of the Hopis. The crucifix is actually a key that lets you into the crypt. That's astounding. How did you figure all this out? I'll give you the full story later. For now, let's get you out of here and have that leg fixed up. No, no, wait. I'm sure it was really hard for you to get here. Come on, let's not just leave without unraveling the mystery of the crucifix. I can hold out a bit longer. Don't worry. Please, go to that crypt. But you need to see a doctor, and that's more important. No, please, Brian. I owe it to my father. Do it for me. Well, okay. Have it your way. You just rest and don't move. Save your energy for when we leave. Okay, Brian. Don't worry about me. I don't like the look of Gina's leg. I didn't want to frighten her, but it seems like it's broken to me. I'll have to find a way to put a splint on her leg if I want to get her out of here. Okay, I think it'd be best to find that Hopi crypt first. Afterward, I'll take care of Gina's leg. Great. Let's look around and see if I can get a handle on this. Yeah, I bet the sacred crypt is up on the cliff up there. Man, it's not gonna be an easy walk. I can't stand those rickety old suspension bridges. Well, I can't turn back now, so off we go. Aha! This must be the entrance to the crypt. And that weird monolith over there must be some kind of door. That doesn't make sense. Yes, that must be the way to open the entrance to the sacred crypt. Bad news. The keyhole in the mouth of the monolith is jammed up with sand, and the key won't go in. Oh man, I thought this was all turning out too easy. I don't know what sort of plant that is, but the stem has pods growing on it like green beans. Okay, it may be just what I need. A couple of those pods are hanging from the branch. Yeah, I think it could be used to clean out that sand. Ready. Now I think I can insert the key. Well, I hope the key will go in now. Great! The monolith is moving! I did it! The time has come to uncover the hidden mystery behind all this. I just keep wondering what I might find in there. The truth is, I'm a bit nervous. Anyway, here we go. Hello, my young friend. I see that you have taken the wise path and managed to reach this place. Hey! I knew you would be able to. Wapuchin? Is that you? Yes, I am Wapuchum. 
the last of the Hopi chiefs. Do not fear. Come closer. But what are you doing here? I don't get it. There is nothing to get. Listen, you do not know it. But this is what you have come in search of. But that? I know what it is. The man who put it here brought dishonor to his Hopi blood by hiding it in this sacred place. It is up to you to remove it and distance this rotten seed from our pure land. Who does it belong to? I am not the one to answer this question. You must ask the one who brought shame to his race by hiding it here. That person's dead. So? What do you mean, so? I can't ask a dead person. I assure you that you can. But how? You must find the path. I know that you will be able to. Now you must leave. But first, leave the sacred Hopi key here. This sacred place must never again be desecrated. Okay, I understand. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Wupuchim. Will we ever meet again? Someday, my young friend. Goodbye, and may Okiwak's light shine on your path. Same to you, Wupuchim. Goodbye! Whoa! I thought I was gonna decipher the mystery, but far from it. I found an even greater one. We've crossed half the country for a bottle with a finger inside. It is a real human finger, I'm sure of it. Bottled in formaldehyde to preserve it properly. But who in the world does this finger belong to that it would be so important? And there would be so many people willing to kill to get it. And as for finding Wupuchim inside there, I'd rather not even talk about it. This is all nuts. Anyway, I'll eventually think of a plan after we get Gina back and get her leg fixed up. Better get her out of here as quickly as possible. It's sitting right at the entrance to the cave, like a sort of guardian to protect the village. It's huge! There's a ladder to go down inside. From up close, that statue looks even more amazing. That face is really intimidating. Now I know how the earliest miners of Douglasville must have felt when they saw this. must be some type of Hopi symbol. Even though it's in the shape of a cross, it's probably not like a church cross. It's a tomahawk. Yeah, a tomahawk could come in handy. Well, this is no simple axe. It can also be used as a pipe. looks similar to the one on the other side. Yep, good idea. By dividing the wood into two pieces, I'll have two boards to use as a splint on Gina's leg. Ready, I think they're just the right size. The pieces of wood are perfect for making a splint but I need something to tie them to Gina's leg.
Luckily, it was long enough for me to lower myself down here. Yes, from here, I could cut the rope pretty far up and get a long enough piece to use as a splint for Gina's leg. Here we go. I'll cut up as high as possible. Done. Let's grab the piece of rope I cut off. With this bit, I'll have enough to make a splint for Gina's leg. Let me just use the rope to tie the pieces of wood on tight. That'll make a good splint. Let's see. Gina, try not to move. I'm gonna put a splint on your leg. Okay, I think it'll work. Gina, it's time to go. We've got to get through the mine, but don't worry, I'll help you, and... Yes, but tell me, what happened in that crypt? Did you get inside? Yeah, I went in and... What did you find inside? Tell me! Well, it was... it was all really weird. I'll tell you on the way. But... Give it a rest. We have a long walk ahead through the mine. We'll have to stop more than once for rest, so I'll have plenty of time to give you a thorough report. Come on, let's go. I think I know of someone who could fix up your leg. You're doing great. Put your arm around my shoulder. Oscar, my friend Gina has an injured leg. Mama Dorita can cure her, right? Of course. Come on, get in here. Would you believe? Gina was alive! I was flabbergasted to find her after thinking I'd lost her forever. As for the mystery we were trying to solve, we were almost worse off than in the beginning. All we had was a human finger and a bottle of formaldehyde, and that was an even greater mystery than the crucifix itself. Thank goodness I could count on Mama Dorita's help, which was more than just fixing up Gina's leg. Now then, a bit of rest while the master plans to drive place on her takes effect. And she'll be just like new in a short while. In the meantime, your little girlfriend had better stay here and not move a step. Thank you so much, Mama Dorita. You are so kind, ma'am. Tenada, you said your name was Brian, right? Uh, yes, ma'am. Brian. Brian Basco. Muy bien, Brian. Something tells me you are also in need of my help. What can I do for you? And please, stop calling me ma'am. Well, ma'am, I, I mean miss. I need to speak with a dead person. Do you mean speak with a spirit of a dead person? Very well, I can help you with that. However, you must know that in addition to myself, I will need a medium while I perform the call to the other side. Furthermore, experience tells me that it is of the utmost importance for the success of the seance that the person with close emotional ties to the spirit remain present. To spice things up a bit, if you catch my drift, of course, you must keep in mind that you may wish to communicate with the unliving, or the unliving may not wish to communicate with you. As for the person with close emotional ties to the spirit, 
There's no problem. That person is Gina. Very well then. That problem is solved. All we have to take care of is the topic of the medium. Why do we need a medium? Look, spirits are intangible entities, and as such, they cannot produce any sounds whatsoever, unless they enter into the body of a living person and use it in order to speak. That is what mediums are for. They are referred to as horses in certain cultures. Where can I find a medium around here? I used to work with a woman from Nakozari, a town south of the Mexican border. She was an excellent medium, but one day we experienced a bit of a rough sound, and she swore never to work as a medium again. Besides the woman from Nakozari, I don't know of anyone else around here. What about using Oscar as a medium? Impossible! Oscar is a marvelous person, but he is in no way prepared to act as a medium. I think I could be a medium. You? I think not. Come closer and look into my eyes. No, you cannot. Your eyes reveal that you are unprepared to lower your level of consciousness enough to fall into a trance. Okay, I see what you mean. I am delighted! How did Oscar start working for you? Well, I can't tell you anything about Oscar's past life. That is his own business, and it is up to him to speak about it if he wishes. What I can tell you is that his life had gone astray when I made him. He was like a boy lost in the woods, with no idea where to turn. I did what I could to help him because I immediately sensed a pure soul trapped inside that strong, huge body. He is very grateful to me, and that is why he insists on remaining by my side. I have told him time and again to get on with his life and forget about me, but he says his only mission in life is to stick by me and serve me in every possible way. I'd like to see Gina. Go ahead, you know where to find her. Gina! Brian, hi! Hey, you shouldn't move that leg too much. Mama Dorita says you'll heal in no time, as long as you rest. I'm just a bit nervous. The concoction that woman put in my leg is really making me itch. Plus, I can't stop thinking about what you told me inside the mine as we were coming here. Especially the part about the human finger in the bottle of formaldehyde. My god, Brian, what are we gonna do now? Well, I've been giving it some thought and all I can think of is one thing. What do you propose? Look, I can't stop thinking about something that Indian chief told me. That Wapu something guy? Wapuchim, yeah. I asked him what that bottle with the finger meant. And he said that the man who took it there should answer that question. I told him, that guy is dead. But Wapuchim said that wasn't necessarily an obstacle. You mean we should talk with... Yes, with your father. I know it'll be hard for you, but I don't see any other way out. I understand. Don't worry about it, but do you really think we can speak with a dead person? Just a few days ago, I would have answered you with a resounding no. But now, after all the things that have happened to me, and what I've seen since we met, I don't know. I think almost anything is possible. Besides, what harm can it do to try? I guess none. <laughs> what have we got to lose? But how in the world will we do it? With the help of Mama Dorita. She's knowledgeable about these things. However, there's one thing that concerns me. Wupuchim said that the person who hid the bottle in the sacred crypt had Hopi blood. So it couldn't have been your father. Oh, yeah. No, of course not. It couldn't be him. Well, I suppose there are more people mixed up in this strange story. Yeah, I guess that's it. Anyway, your dad has to be able to explain everything. I'm sure he can. So, when should we do it? I have to get a medium for the seance. Okay. Well, keep me informed, please. How are you feeling? Better and better. I must admit, Mama Dorita knows what she's doing. I'm out of here. I have to work on finding a medium. That's okay. I hate having to stay here without moving and without helping you. You just have to think about healing as fast as you can. 
See you later. Be careful. Bye-bye. So you made it to the Hopi village, did you? Come on, get up here right away and tell me how you did it. Okay, I'm coming. How did you find out? News gets around fast. And I also know you didn't come back from the Hopi village alone. You didn't tell me about the girl. You see, I thought she was dead. And I didn't feel like talking about it. Oh, I think there are lots of things you'd rather not talk to me about. Don't you think it's time you told me the truth about how you got here? Well, all right. But I'm warning you, it's a crazy story. Oh, don't worry. All the better. Here goes. A few days ago, I started on my own. Gina is at Mama Dorita's house letting her leg heal while I try to figure out the meaning of a bottle of formaldehyde with the human finger floating inside. That's all. You didn't believe a word I said, did you? No, you're wrong. I know when someone lies to me and you weren't lying. Plus, Brian, <laughs> I kind of like you. You can count on me to give you a hand with whatever you need. That's great, Sushi, thanks. Those speakers look mighty powerful. I'd say they're processors used for databases. This is no simple operation Sushi's got set up here. As you can see, Sushi doesn't pinch pennies when it comes to computer equipment. That 21-inch plasma monitor must have cost a small fortune. I think I saw it in a science fiction movie, some classic in black and white. Let's see, a scanner, a printer, a laptop, a digital clock, and a plant. A cactus, to be precise. Nope, don't need any of that. Hey, that guy over there must be Rutger. Hello, Rutger, right? Yeah, and you're Brian, I bet. Saturn's told me about you. By the way, that helmet you gave me is way cool. You wouldn't happen to have another one for me, would ya? No, sorry, I only have that one. Well, if you ever come across another one, keep Mr. Rutger in mind. Sure thing. Awesome man. Hey, that music you were playing sounded really neat. You thought it was cool? Playing the bongos totally mellows me out. It's my hobby, you know. The greenhouse you've set up here is really something. Thanks, man. Plants are my life. That is the truth. I've mostly got African spices in here. You know why? Because Africa is the mother of life. I was thinking, you wouldn't happen to know of a plant or something like that that would help a person go into a trance, would ya? To enter a trance? You mean to trip out, right? I have some knowledge in that area. You think you could prepare me some of that? I could, but look, I don't know if you're aware of how things work around here. Oh yeah, I should give you something in exchange. That's it, right? You got it. And what might that something be? Hmm, I don't know. I don't really need anything. Something I might like, you know. Could you tell me exactly what the Rastafarian beliefs consists of? No. I'll just go on my way, Wrecker. See ya! See ya! Yeah, I think that might be the thing to do. Hey, Rutger. Hey, what's up? I believe I have something you might be interested in. Let me see, man. Ah, uh, yes. 
It's a fine Hopi axe pipe. Very nice, man. I'm glad you like it. Do we have a deal then? The pipe, in exchange for preparing what we talked about. Oh yes, it's a deal. This is sweet as honey. Take a puff. No thanks, I don't smoke. Listen, didn't you want some herbal pleasure to lighten you up a bit? Yeah, but... Well, this is the thing. Smoke. Okay. I'm not used to this, so uh, one drag will do. Whoa. I feel dizzy already. I better get out of here fast. I believe I'm ready to act as a medium. Hmm, let's see. Show me your eyes. No, a bit better, but no. I must say your disposition for lowering consciousness enough to go into a trance has improved. But you still don't seem adequately prepared. About the medium. See. Si. You have found someone? As for the person with close emotional ties to the spirit, there's no problem. That person is Gina. Very well then. That problem is solved. All we have to take care of is the topic of the medium. Okay, I see what you mean. I am delighted. Well, I won't bug you anymore. Goodbye. Bye con Dios, Brian. Hey, Rucker. Hey, what's up? That stuff you put in the pipe didn't work. I need something a bit stronger. More powerful, huh? Hmm. I think I know what you need. I was just recently studying some old Indian shaman recipes. There is one that the Hopi tribe's medicine men used to use. Have you heard of them, Hopi Indians? Yeah, I've heard something about it. Apparently, these Hopi medicine men used to make a brew that was mighty strong. They said they used it to help their spirit leave their body and be able to get closer to Kichi Manitou, the great spirit. That is just what I need. Can you make it for me? I'm afraid not. I have all the ingredients except one. The most essential of all, the Yawaskel. Yawaskel? Yeah. You get it from inside these pods that grow on a plant which grows in this area. The problem is, I haven't been able to find that plant anywhere, even though I've searched throughout the region for weeks. Seems this crazy plant only grows on sacred Hopi lands. Huh. And do you know what the Yawaskal looks like? From the drawings I've seen, they're bumpy bowls of a dark red color. I've studied the topic quite a bit, and though I've never seen any of those bowls myself, I'm sure I could identify one if I saw it. Hmm, very interesting, Rutger. I've got to go now. Let's keep talking about this later. Sure thing, man. Hmm, I still have the branch I tore off the outside of the sacred crypt. And now that I've taken a closer look, there's some pods on the stem. Yeah, what luck! I bet that plant I took the branch off of is precisely the one Rucker was talking about. I'll pull the pods off the branch. Done. Now I should open them and see if they contain those famous little red balls. These pods are really hard. There's no way I can open them with my hands. I need something else to tear them open. Okay, let's take one more peek to see what I can find. 
This scalpel may be just what I was looking for. Yes. Using the scalpel, I can open the pods up and get the little Yawaska balls out. Ugh, that didn't work. These pods are as hard as a rock. I wonder why Sushi has lit the fire at this time of year. The poker's made of iron and looks pretty strong. Yeah, I may use it. It's been covered with ash and soot by the fire, but it's not in bad shape. Yes, good idea. If I heat up the scalpel, it'll definitely cut better. I'll leave it in there for a few seconds to make it nice and hot. That should do the trick. Ow! I gotta be careful. It's burning hot. All right, this time the pods will yield to my strength. Finally. Now I've got those silly Yawaska balls. And just in time. The scalpel's cooled down and is now at room temperature. Good thing I cut through the pods when I did. Whoa, Wrecker's gonna flip when he sees this. Hey, Wrecker. Hey, what's up? You'll never believe it. What? I've got some Yawaska balls. No way, brother. Don't believe me? Seeing is believing. Man. You're right, it's prime Yawaska. Told you so. Can you make that Hopi brew you told me about now? Of course, I'll get right to it. Perfect, I'll let you work then. Well, a long time seems to have gone by. I think that Rucker must have that brew ready. Rucker! Yeah, I'm over here, man. Is it finished? I have the finished product, and I'm telling you right now, this is some great day stuff. Those Hopis sure knew what they were doing. If this doesn't put you into orbit, I don't know what will, my friend. Okay, does this taste bad? Bad? No way, these guys even made their herbal infusions taste delicious. Drink with no fear, man. Yeah, I can feel it already. It's as if uh, I were levitating. I'm leaving before the effects get any stronger. Okay, sir, but I'm drinking the leftovers. Now I know I'm prepared enough to become a medium. You don't give up, do you? Very well, let me look into your eyes. Hmm, you win, Brian. I think you will be able. Your eyes have revealed this. Good, your mind is ready. Now, we must prepare your soul. Prepare my soul? It is indispensable in case something goes wrong. What do you mean by that? I didn't think this was dangerous. And it is not, provided a medium is truly prepared. Believe me, preparing your soul properly will keep you from fear. Okay already, fine. What do I have to do? Kneel before the altar. Here? Yes, on your knees. Repeat after me. Okay. San Luciano, I pray that you care for my soul while it is absent from my body. San Luciano, I pray that you care for my soul while it is absent from my body. Santa Brigida, protect me with your cloak and do not allow the devil to take over my body. 
Santa Brigida, protect me with your cloak and do not allow the devil to take over my body. Jesus, my soul is clean and ready to travel to your side if you wish it to be so. Jesus, my soul is clean and ready to travel to your side if you wish it to be so. Enough. Please rise. Okay, should I bring in Gina so we can get this over with? Not so fast. We won't be doing it here. We are going to the Well of Souls. Where? Do not worry, it's a proper place. Do you see the well to my right? That is the place. Go. Do we really have to go in there? Yes, we do. Think no longer and go in. Vamonos! You will see a seat inside of our pentagram. Sit in it and prepare your mind. Oscar will help Gina and me down. All right, whatever you say. Let's begin. Now, Brian, it is important for you to stay relaxed. Was it really necessary to tie me to the chair? See, si, believe me. It was for your own safety, I assure you. Now, stare into my eyes, por favor. All the tension is flowing out of your body. You are relaxed, more and more relaxed. You feel good, muy bien. I am going to count to three, and when I finish, you will fall into a deep slumber. One, two, three. We are here to contact a being from the other side. We have the will and the medium. We have the will and the medium. The medium awaits in the center of the pentagram. Someone from this plane wishes to speak with that being. We invoke that being with all due respect. We have the will and the medium. Gina, it's your turn. Speak with that spirit. Tell him you want to talk with him. Johnny? Johnny the Indian, it's me, Gina. I need to talk with you. You were about to tell me something and we were interrupted. Now we have a chance to finish our conversation. Johnny, it's me, Gina. Please talk to me. got you. Yes, I remember. We were talking at the Pink Iguana when those thugs showed up, but I don't remember anything more. Where have I been? It's dark here, and I'm freezing! Johnny, look, you're... you're... locked up. The Sandretti's locked you into the basement, under the storeroom, in the Pink Iguana. Damn them! Gina, you've got to help me. Get me out of here, and I'll take you with me. We'll be rich, kiddo, and we'll live like kings. So, it's true? You kept the money from the truck heist? Of course I did. I pulled one over on those bastards. I'll share the cash with you, baby. Just get me out of here fast. Now's not a good time. There's guards all over the place. I'll come get you out later. But tell me, where did you hide the money? The Sandretti's haven't been able to find a clue. <laughs> of course they haven't found it. Do you think I'm an idiot? Those evildoers would never find the money. <laughs> you are so sly, Johnny. Where is it hidden? Yeah, kiddo. Too smart to trust you, too. I'm not telling you one more word. Get me out of here, and I'll give you your piece of the pie. Mm, okay. All right. I'll come back in a while and help you escape. I'll be waiting. Make it quick. Johnny? Johnny? He has departed. And I must say I don't like what I saw one bit. Gina, you have toyed with a spirit, and that can be very dangerous. Hope you don't regret it later on. But let us set that topic aside. Brian is exhausted and needs to rest. Oscar, untie Brian and take him to my room. Lay him on the bed and let him sleep as long as he needs. Gina! Oscar put you in bed. You've been asleep for nearly 24 hours. The effort of being a medium left you exhausted. 
Do you remember anything that happened in the Well of Souls? Enough! Everything seemed like a dream. It was like I was floating above your heads. But I perfectly remember that you didn't invoke your father. No, it was Johnny. Johnny the Indian. That's it. Well, don't you think you owe me an explanation? Yes, I guess so. Well, here goes. Remember everything I told you about my father's death in the hospital? Yeah, of course I remember. Well, it wasn't exactly true. You mean, your father didn't? No, he's perfectly fine. And he doesn't work for the government, like I said. He breeds sheep in Marion Bridge, Utah. So, you invented all of that? Not exactly. Let me explain. I really did work at the Pink Iguana, but I wasn't really a singer. I performed in another type of show. That night, when my act was over, I talked to Johnny the Indian, a pretty shady fellow who'd just gotten out on parole. Johnny had had a few too many. He told me he was going to start a new life and that I should go with him. He showed me the crucifix he wore around his neck the whole four years he's been in prison and said it was the key that would open the door to that new life. He was drunk and I didn't take him very seriously. I thought the guy was embracing Christianity or something like that. And then, the Sandretti brothers showed up. Johnny asked me to keep the crucifix for him and to disappear before they saw me. Everything I told you about my father's death in the storeroom of the pink iguana was true. But it wasn't my father they killed. It was Johnny. They interrogated him and beat him to a pulp. I'd heard of the Sandretti brothers and how dangerous they are. But that night, I saw it with my own eyes. When I saw them kill Johnny, I couldn't help but scream. So they found me out and I ran as fast as I could down the alley. But why were they interrogating him? What did he do? Well, Johnny had just spent four years in the slammer for holding up a truck. The whole heist was set up by the Sandrettis. Johnny was part of the group that did the job. In the beginning, the theft was a success, a fast robbery with no deaths or injuries. The money was supposed to be handed over to the Sandrettis in a garage a few hours later, but someone set a trap. The garage was full of cops, and the thieves were arrested. Luckily for them, the Sandrettis didn't show up personally, so no one could prove they were involved. However, they didn't catch all the thieves. For some reason, Johnny managed to get away, and they didn't find him until two days later near the Mexican border. More importantly, the money from the robbery never appeared. What do you mean? It wasn't in the garage, and Johnny didn't have it when they arrested him. He swore he escaped from the garage without taking a cent. Despite all their investigations, the police never found the cash. From what I heard the night they killed Johnny, the Sandretti suspected he'd kept the money and that he was the one who informed the cops and set up the raid on the garage. They thought he hidden the dough somewhere during the two days he was hiding out and that he had let himself get caught so the Sandrettis wouldn't suspect anything. You think someone with that much money would allow himself to be caught knowing he'd be put away for years? Yeah, if he didn't have any other choice. He knew that if he ran off with the money, the Sandrettis would find out and hunt him down long before the police did. He must have thought 20 million bucks were well worth four years in prison. 20 million? 20 million. No doubt Johnny thought that by the time he was released, the Sandrettis would have forgotten the whole story and that he could enjoy a great retirement. But things didn't work out that way. The Sandrettis don't forget 20 million bucks just because, and they were looking for him the day he got out of jail. So, when the Sandrettis interrogated him, did they get the truth out of him? No, that animal Gustav killed him too fast, and Johnny never acknowledged having kept the money. So we don't know if Johnny really even had it. Oh, yes we do. He told me so through your mouth during the seance. The bad thing is, I couldn't get him to tell me where he hid the money. So? All you were really interested in the whole time was getting that money, huh? No, well, at least not at first. I was just trying to save my life. I had been an eyewitness to a murder and knew that they would snuff me out to keep me from talking. After that, I admit I thought if we found the money, I could start a new life far from the Sandrettis. <laughs> is that so terrible? Depends on how you look at it. What I don't understand is why they didn't knock us off in Chicago when they had us trapped in the museum. Someone at the Pink Iguana probably told them Johnny had talked to me before they killed him. They must have thought I knew something about the money, and they wanted to get it out of me. Lucky you were so great and got us out of that awful cabin. Oh, don't suck up to me now. You've been fooling me all this time. I'm such an idiot. I walked right into your trap. 
Please, Brian, you've got to forgive me. I swear I never wanted to lie to you, but I was scared to death. And I was afraid you wouldn't help me if I told you the truth. Well, you're wrong there. I'm so stupid I'd have helped you anyway. But this is the end of it. I'm leaving straight for California, and you? No, please. You know they'll kill me. Sooner or later they'll find me and do me in. My only chance is to find the money and use it to start a new life. You know that. Please don't leave me alone now. Help me. Okay. I'll help you find that cursed money. And then, I never want to see you again as long as I live. Don't say that. I really care about you. Oh, please. Don't play me for a sucker again. I already said I'd help you. Save the sorry act for the theater. Don't believe me if you don't want to, but I'm being sincere. Besides, if we find the money, half will be yours. I don't want a dime of that money. Do whatever you want. Well, we know Johnny safeguarded the money somewhere nearby. And no matter how strange it seems, the finger in the bottle must have something to do with it. But where should we start to look? Look, while you were asleep, I remembered something Johnny told me years ago, before the robbery. What? He said that he used to take time off between jobs to spend a few days in his homeland in Arizona, in an old trailer where he used to live before going to New York. That trailer can't be very far from here. And if we find it, maybe there'll be some clues about the money inside. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Well, I'll start with that and try to find that trailer. I'm going with you. My leg is much better. No way. You haven't recovered yet, and I don't want to have to carry you. Are you going to be mad at me for the rest of your life? No, because I plan on removing you from it soon. Fine, just go alone if my company annoys you. I'm leaving, but don't worry. I'll be back. Goodbye. I think the first thing I'll do is go see Sushi. I've got to speak with someone I can trust about all of this. Hi, Sushi. Hi, Brian. How's it going? Did you find anything out? Actually, I did, but I'm not sure whether I'm too happy about it. Why's that? What happened? Everything Gina told me to wrap me up in this mess has turned out to be a pack of lies. Seriously? Tell all. Look, do you remember about Gina's father? Yeah, the poor girl saw them murder him in cold blood right before her very eyes. Well, forget about the murder. The old guy is living peacefully breeding sheep in Marion Bridge, Utah. What? And that's when Gina told me the truth. She can't return to New York because she wouldn't last two days. She plans to have me help her find the money that Johnny stole so she can start a new life. I don't know what to do. I'm not interested in the money, but I don't want to leave Gina high and dry either. Besides, my life isn't worth much more than Gina's at this point. Well, when I look at it, that money has no owner at this point. It'd be better for Gina to keep it and start that new life than to have it end up in the hands of those awful Sandretti mob guys. As for the bank the money was stolen from, I'm sure it got an insurance payoff years ago, so nobody will lose out. I don't know. Ever since I left New York, I feel like I've lost control of my life. I'm like a puppet with someone else pulling my strings. They decide what I can and can't do. Sort of like in those computer games, you know what I mean? Computer adventures? Yeah, I love them! Cheer up, Brian. You know you can count on me for help. Thanks, Sushi. You're wonderful. Anyway, I gotta try and find Johnny's old trailer. We know it's around here somewhere, and I'm sure I'll find clues in it leading me to the money. An old trailer? I don't remember seeing one, but the truth is that I don't leave Douglasville except to go into the city for provisions. Maybe Rutger or Saturn know something. Yeah, I'll go talk to them. See you around, Sushi. Okay, see you soon.
Hey, Rutger. Hey, how was that yummy cocktail I made for you? Great, it worked fine. But I assure you, I don't plan on trying it again. Well, whatever. Hey, do you remember seeing a trailer around somewhere during your plant gathering expeditions? A trailer? No, I don't remember seeing any trailer, man. I'll just go on my way, Wrecker. See ya! See ya! Hello, Saturn. How's it going with the Idea Blasting Helmet? Hello, BB. The helmet is excellent, amazing. The only problem is the Great Desequa. The what? The statue I had hanging on the crane. It's disappeared. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you? Me? No, not a clue. It's so odd, don't you think? Yeah, well, I hope it's just one of Rutger's little practical jokes. Though he assured me he knows nothing. Don't worry, I'm sure it'll turn up. I hope so. Hey, when you've gone out looking for raw materials, did you happen to see a trailer? Hmm, I think I recall seeing an old trailer one time. Yes, but it didn't seem like anyone lived in it. It looked abandoned. And where was that, Saturn? Don't you remember? It's really important. Well, let me think. That must have been seven or eight months ago. And at that time, I was involved in a project for which I needed a large quantity of clay. So I was in search of argillaceous zones. By the way, have I mentioned a simply amazing work? The construction of an exact replica of the city of Florence in the second half of the 14th century. Splendor of Florence. It's one of my greatest works. You see, I was trying to capture the spirit that... Listen, Saturn, that's interesting and all, but I'm in kind of a hurry. I'll drop by later so you can fill me in on your great work, but please just tell me where you saw that trailer for now. All right, I shall. It was on the other side of Painted Canyon Gulch, to the south of Douglasville, about one hour away from here. Okay, I hope I can find it. You should really reflect on your life, BB. You always seem to be searching for something you don't have. I see you're working on a stone sculpture right now. Yes, I can't tell you exactly what it is that I'm sculpting, but I've been struck with great inspiration. We'll discuss that later, Saturn. See you soon. Ciao. There's the trailer. No doubt about it. That's got to be the one. Okay, let's see what I find around here. It's closed. Possible. It's locked up tight. Sure. By using it as a lever, I might get that door open. It worked! I'm in. Let's see what I find inside. Ugh! What a stench! Place is a mess! I'd better move fast and get out of here as soon as possible. It's as big of a mess as the rest of this disgusting trailer. I wouldn't sleep in that bed for anything in the world. Don't see anything tasty. Just some leftovers and a couple of empty bottles. How weird. This looks like a nun's habit. No, why would I want to take that? Plus, 
I'm very respectful about that sort of thing. It's just filled with old clothes. I won't find any clues in there. Just old clothes and some blankets. It's full of papers. Okay, I'll just rummage through these papers. This looks interesting. It's an advertisement for a bank. That may be where the money is. Sushi. Hey, Brian. Anything newsy? I found Johnny's trailer. How cool. And did you find any clues leading to the money? Yeah, I found a brochure for a maximum security bank in the trailer. I'd appreciate it a lot if you could investigate it on the internet and find out about the bank. Sure, that's a cinch. I'm going to finish a little job I'm wrapped up in, and then I'll get right to it. Leave the brochure on the desk, please. Okay. Thanks, Sushi. No problem. I'll report back later. Some really juicy news. I'm coming. So, what did you find out? First of all, I investigated what type of bank the brochure you found is for. It's not any conventional bank. The customers rent safety deposit boxes to keep their stuff in. Money, jewelry, antiques, whatever. They don't have to give any explanation at all of what's deposited inside. And I assure you, the place is a veritable fortress. I need not say that there has never been a robbery or even an attempted robbery. Then, do you think Johnny put the money there? Well, it's a possibility. This type of bank charges its customers a fortune, and in turn, they pay astronomical taxes to the government in exchange for certain immunity. I mean, the police have no access to lists of customers or the items on deposit. That undoubtedly makes it a pretty safe place to stash money. Using my amazing skills, I broke into the bank's database, but I didn't see the name Johnny anywhere on the list of customers. That doesn't surprise me. If Johnny wanted to hide the money there, I'm sure he was more concerned about throwing the Sandrettis off than the police. But what really gave me a big clue was the security system used at the Mojave Bank. When customers rent a safety deposit box, they receive no key or magnetic card whatsoever. Nothing. What they do is perform a fingerprint analysis. And when customers want to access the box, they just place their index finger on a scanner for the computer to identify their fingerprint. And then they're let in. You catch my drift? Yeah, you're thinking of the bottle of formaldehyde I found in the sacred crypt. There you go. Then I researched the police databases, and I entered Johnny's full name, John Tawangyama. I verified that he showed up dead in a New York alley two days ago. I kept following the lead of his last name, which obviously isn't very common, and I found an interesting bit of info. Four years back, a woman's corpse floated up in the Green Gila River. When they checked her identity, she turned out to be Sister Juana Buenadicha of the Santa Clara Mission in California. She'd been strangled and thrown into the river. A nun? No way! How was she connected to all this? Juana Buenadicha is the name she took when she entered the order. That woman was an Indian, though, and her real name was Mary Tawangyama. Was she related to Johnny? It was his twin sister. Guess what was missing from the body when they found it? 
I bet it was her right index finger. Bingo! And whose name do you think the safety deposit box at the Mojave Bank was rented to for 10 years? Sister Juana Benedicha? Exactly! It all fits together now. Johnny made his sister rent the safety deposit box at the Mojave Bank and put all the money there. I don't think he planned on killing her in the beginning, but by the end, he was afraid she would betray him while he was in prison. That scoundrel preferred not to risk it, so he strangled his own sister, cut her finger off, and tossed the body into the river. I guess he thought it wouldn't be hard to disguise himself as a nun and use his sister's finger to take out the money when the time came. Hiding the finger in the sacred Hopi crypt seems a bit unlikely, but I think he was running out of time by then, and he needed a safe place to keep the finger for all of the years he was going to be locked up in jail. He knew about the crypt, and it seemed like a good solution. I suppose that what he never counted on was that the Sandretis would get suspicious and go after him the minute he was released from prison. Good work, Sushi. I'm amazed. Thanks. Well, I don't think there's anything to stop you from taking the money using the plan Johnny already cooked up. Just to be on the safe side, it would be better for Gina to dress up as Juana Buena Dicha. She can put on a nun outfit and use the finger. I don't think she'll have any trouble taking out the cash. These banks are famous for not asking lots of questions. Sushi, it's only fair for you to get some of the money. You've definitely earned your share. I don't really need it. No, Brian. You know, I don't like to talk about this, but I've actually got a lot of my own money already. I inherited a truckload and won't be able to spend it all if I live a thousand years. I'm not interested in money, probably because I've never needed it. That's just me. Don't think twice, Brian. Have Gina get the money and start a new life. You just have to get a nun costume, and that shouldn't be a pro- Wait, now I remember. When I was in Johnny's trailer, I saw a nun's habit on a hanger. How evil. I'm sure it was his sister's habit. Well, all the better. Go get that habit and you're ready. But don't leave without saying goodbye. Of course not, Sushi. Before picking up Gina to leave, I'll come by and say farewell. See ya. See ya, Brian. Okay, but it gives me the creeps to take it. Think of that poor woman killed by her own scoundrel of a brother. I think we're in luck. The habit is just Gina's size. Okay, all set. Now for the money. Hey, I hear the sound of an engine in the distance. I think a car is approaching. It might be dangerous, Better hide just in case. No, not now. Those dumb goons, Gustav and Theodore, they found us. Here's the trailer, just like Bob said. Yeah. But I don't think Johnny the Indian was dumb enough to hide the cash here. I don't either, but we better check. Did you see that? Fresh footprints by the door. Do you think they belong to that idiot and that bimbo? They only belong to one person. And by the size of them, they must be his. Something tells me they're close by. They probably split up to try and find where Johnny stashed the dough. I bet they'll come back here. Either together or alone. What if they have the money? Nah, I don't think so. Plus, finding them in this area won't be that easy. This is a huge desert. Let's do a full search of this trailer and wait for a while to see if they show up. But if they don't, then we'll go out and look for them. And mark my words, we'll find them, whatever it takes. And when we do, they'll wish they'd never been born. Come on!
rotten killers. I've got to do something before those two find us. Hello, Sushi. Hi, Brian. Do you have the nun's habit yet? I have it, but now we've got new problems. Right when I was leaving the trailer, Gustav and Theodore showed up. They're the Sandretti's henchmen. They almost saw me. Wow! So they're hot on your trail then? No, I'm afraid not. I guess they knew about Johnny's trailer and must have imagined that we would be looking for it too. From what I could hear them say, they plan on waiting in the trailer to see if we show up. Well, that gives you some time to escape. You've got the habit. Now go get the money and drive away fast. I don't know. Now I realize that Gina and I will never be safe. No matter where we go, they'll end up finding us. Hmm. Yeah, I hate to say it, but I think you're right. So, what can you guys do? I don't know yet. The best thing would be to think of a way to get rid of them all forever. You're a smart woman, Sushi. Can't you come up with something? Well, just like that? No. I'll ponder the topic. Maybe between the two of us, we can devise a solution. But there's one thing that concerns me even more. What if those killers decide to leave the trailer and reconnoiter the area? No doubt, they'd quickly find Douglasville. And from what you've told me, they won't hesitate to increase the body count and that'll help them find you. We're all in danger. Yeah, you're right. We should do something about that. As soon as possible. I'll try to think of something. Then I'll tell you about it. Me too. See you soon. Yes, a burst of steam blasted out. It's a sheriff's badge. It must have flown out the smokestack like the cell key did. Yeah, I can use that. It's not too worn out considering the circumstances. Oscar? What's up, Brian? Your life has a new mission. I've spoken to Mama Dorita about this, and she fully agrees. Well, what is it? Oscar, you've been named the new Sheriff of Douglasville. Wow. Please raise your right hand so I can swear you in. Repeat after me. I promise to defend, with my life if necessary, the laws set down in the Constitution of this nation. I promise to defend with my wife, if necessary, the laws down in that Constitution of this here nation. And I swear I will do everything necessary to ensure that these laws are not violated and to pursue anyone who might attempt to break them. And I swear I'll do things necessary to ensure them laws aren't violated and to pursue anyone who might attempt to break them. Perfect. Oscar, I hereby officially name you Sheriff of Douglasville. Dandy. Sheriff Oscar, your first mission has already come in. Listen, you've got to go to... Hey, what about my weapon? What? My sheriff's weapon. What kind of law enforcement official can I be without a weapon? Yeah, you're right. Hmm. Of course, your sheriff's weapon. Sorry, I forgot to bring that. I'll go get it. You wait here and I'll be back faster than you can say sheriff. Yes, I know the rifle Sushi shot me with when I got to Douglasville has to be around here somewhere. I know she won't mind if I take it. Now this is looking better. So you were saying? What is my first mission as sheriff? Look, about three miles south of Douglasville, 
There's a couple of guys creating a ruckus and frightening the locals. You've got to stop them and lock them up in the Douglasville jail. But watch your step, partner. These guys are armed and dangerous. Don't you worry, friend. In the penitentiary, they used to call me Terminator. I'm going after them. Good luck. I'm sure you can do the job, Sheriff. Okay, the best thing to do would be to head for Douglasville and wait there until Oscar's completed his mission. From this window, I'll be able to see Oscar when he arrives. Here comes Gustav and Theodore's car. And Oscar is driving. So I guess everything went okay. Yes, he's pulling them out of the car, and he's tied them up hand and foot. What a tough dude. He's grabbed each of them by one arm and is dragging him into the jail. Whoa, he's so buff. I've got to tell Sushi. Sushi, good news. Really? What is it? Those cursed assassins are now locked away in the town jail. But how did you manage that? It was Oscar. I made him the town sheriff and gave him his first mission, to capture those two killers. No way. <laughs> You're unbelievable, Brian. That big guy Oscar is unbelievable. By the way, I gave him your rifle so he could carry out his mission. You don't mind, do you? No, that's OK. Plus, I won't be needing it anymore. Law and order have been brought back to town. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, this is all good, but it doesn't solve the real problem. Besides, we're not exactly the murdering types. And even if we were, all we'd achieve by eliminating Gustav and Theodore is for the Sandretis to send more killers after us. Yep, you're right. We've got to think of something to free us of the Sandretis for good. You said it. You know what? I think I'll go and congratulate Oscar and get the pleasure of seeing those two thugs behind bars. Are you coming? No, not right now. You go, and I'll keep thinking of a plan. All right, see you soon. See you soon. Oscar, good work. You managed to catch those two bad guys. Thanks, but I was just doing my job. Those two bandits thought they could beat me with a little gun and some knives. Yeah, they were really fooling themselves. You locked them up in the cell, right? Yeah, the things they were carrying are in a jail bag on the desk in the office. Perfect, Oscar. You're a real professional. Just doing my work. By the way, Brian, from now on, would you mind calling me Sheriff? Of course not. It would be a pleasure, Sheriff. Hi, guys. You! You're the moron behind all this? Not as much of a moron as you, it seems. This time, you've met your match, one would say. Wouldn't you, boys? You mean that orangutan? He caught us off guard. He didn't look dangerous with that silly face. I'd watch my mouth if I were you. If Oscar hears you, I accept no responsibility for his actions. You're some smart aleck kid, but you're out of your league. Stop playing funny boy. You're a dead man. Yeah, deader than that corpse there behind you. I don't think you should be threatening anyone at this point. You should be begging. And speaking of that guy back there, take a good look. Because that's how you guys are going to end up. What a waste of time talking to two killers. Why don't you shut your trap, you Russian retard? OK. Examining the stuff those two guys were carrying around may give us some ideas. The canvas is pretty worn out, but I don't think it'll tear.
sushi. Yes, Brian. I brought you everything Gustav and Fyodor had on him. Maybe you can use it to investigate on the internet or something like that. Okay, as soon as I have time, I'll take a look at it. Leave it on the table for me, please. All right, it's all inside a jail bag. Okay. Sushi, I'm sorry for disturbing you. No problem. Have you taken a look at Gustav and Fyodor's things? Yeah, but I bet all their papers are fake. I haven't found any information on their past on the internet. Although, well, there is one thing I discovered. Gustav is a total movie fan. Movies? How do you know? While looking through his wallet, I found a season ticket to the film archives of New York. Can you believe it? That animal is a cinema lover. I don't want to imagine what his favorite films are. You know, movies are what I've missed most since moving here. In Boston, I used to go two or three times a week. You like movies? Oh, I do too. I'm a major movie freak. Oh, yeah? So tell me, who is your favorite director? Woody Allen. He's my favorite too. I know it's hard to pick since there are so many good ones, but which of his movies do you like best? Manhattan Murder Mystery. I love that one. Do you remember the scene where, hey, wait a minute. I think I've got an idea to solve all this. Just let me think for a minute here, but it should work. Wait, let me organize everything and then I'll explain. But can't you tell me about your bright idea? No, I'd rather make sure that we have everything we need first. Come back in an hour, okay? Seems like it's been an hour to me. Well? Let me explain. Remember how in Manhattan Murder Mystery they record the husband's voice in order to pretend that he makes a phone call later on? Yeah, sure I remember. My idea is to do something similar. We'll call the Sandrettis pretending to be one of the thugs. There's a cellular phone in Gustav and Theodore's things. I've looked through it, and there's a number memorized as bosses, which is undoubtedly the number they call to report to the Sandretti. We use a more sophisticated system than in the movie, a voice emulation program I downloaded once from a website called The Way Secret and Fully Invincible. What would we achieve by calling the Sandrettis and pretending to be the thugs? We'll make them suspect that Gustav and Theodore are intending to keep the cash for themselves. Yeah. That sounds like a good plan. How do we do it? You have to record the thugs' voices so I can enter samples into the program. It'll analyze them and create a filter which we can use on any voice to make it sound like the voice of those killers. Program is that good? Guaranteed. Meanwhile, you have to record Gina saying something like, you lying murderer, you killed him and now you want to keep the money. Gina is on our side, so we can just use her voice. We don't need to emulate it. Got it? Yeah, but... Are you sure this is going to work? Of course I am. Don't you worry. Just do your part and leave the rest up to me. There's an MP3 recorder on the table. Go get it and record those voices, please. All right, I will. OK, don't take too long. It's small and incredibly light. Where's the girl? Okay, let's do it. Hi guys, how's it going? What kind of game do you think you're playing, kid? Let us go now, and you might get out of this alive. I'm starving. Aren't you going to feed us? Man, they get better treatment at Shawshank. By this time, the Sandretis must be asking themselves why we haven't called in for two hours. It won't take them long to send someone out looking for us. 
Get ready, you worm! Hey, I think I'm ready to re-enter society. Why don't you let me out so I can integrate and start a new life? The first thing I plan to do is go massacre your whole family. Why don't you shut your trap, you Russian retard? Give it the rest, what I... Come on, boys. Don't argue. Cellmates are supposed to get along. Done. Now I have the voices of those two recorded. Johnny! You tricked me, you hussy! Now you're gonna die! Uh, uh, now you're uh, gonna uh, 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 Calm down. You were asleep. You must have been having a nightmare. Yeah, it was horrible. Johnny was rising from his grave to kill me. There, there. It's all over now. Yeah, good thing you got here and saved me from Johnny. You don't look so angry with me anymore. Well... Let's drop that. Listen, come up with a plan for us to keep the money and get rid of the Sandretis forever. I need to record you saying, you awful killer, you killed him and now you want to keep the money for yourselves. But what for? Explain it to me. There's no time, Gina, just trust me. Come on, let's rehearse once before recording. Let me remind you of the sentence. You awful killer, you killed him and now you want to keep the money for yourselves. You awful lying killer, you killed him, and now you want to keep the money for yourselves. That was pretty bad, Gina. When you lied to me, you did a much better job. Come on, try again. You lying killer. You killed him, and now now you want to keep the money for yourselves. Better. But it still doesn't sound real. Try it once more. You lying killer. You killed him, and now you want to keep the money for yourselves. Well, it's no Oscar performance, but it'll do. Wait for me to start recording, and say it again. You lying killer. You killed him, and now you want to keep the money for yourselves. Okay, I'm leaving. There's no time to lose. Get ready. I'll come back for you shortly, and we'll go find the money. Aren't you going to tell me your plans? Later. I promise. Right now, I have to leave. All right, but don't take long, please. No, don't worry. See you soon. See you. Now it's all recorded. I should take the recorder to Sushi ASAP so she can implement the plan. Hey, Sushi. Did you get the recordings? Yes, I have it all. Excellent. Leave the recorder on the desk and give me an hour to organize everything. Whatever you say. See you in an hour. Bye. Seems like it's been an hour to me. All set? All set. Look at this. Brian, you're a bag of pond scum. How does it sound? Wonderful, Sushi. And you said I was unbelievable. You're the amazing one. Well, it's no big deal. I ended up using Gustav's voice because he seemed like the thug leaving the show. We'll make the call using my computer. But the computer has a system that will make them think they're receiving the call from Gustav and Theodore's cell phone. I've also prepared the sample of Gina with a few touch-ups, including gunshot sound effects I added in. Let's go. I hope everything turns out OK. I'm sure it will, Sushi. I trust you. It's about time. What the heck is up? We nabbed him. Well, have you gotten the information out of him? It's what we suspected, boss. Johnny told that floozy where the money was hidden before we did away with him. I knew it. So, what about the cash? Do you have it back? Bad news, Chief. 
the money's history. What? What do you mean it's history? Let me explain, boss. When we got here and found that bimbo and her little friend, we decided to follow them without them seeing us. You know, to see if they'd lead us to the cash. And? And it worked, boss. We followed them to an old abandoned mine. And apparently that's where Johnny hid the booty after the heist. We caught him by surprise exiting the mine with two huge trunks. But this stupid mule Theodore jumped the gun, as usual, and shot too soon. You useless, incompetent donkeys! Theodore missed and they ran back into the mine. We chased after him and trapped him at the end of the mine shaft full of boxes. Boxes of dynamite, that is. I screamed at Theodore, don't shoot! But that dim wit of a Russian had already fired a gunload of bullets. The whole place turned into an inferno in one second. We ran out and escaped from the mine by an inch. Stupid morons. The whole mine blew to bits with the floozy and that idiot inside. And the money, unfortunately. I'm sorry, boss. The way we left that place, there was no way to get the money out, and... You lying killer. You killed him, and now you want to keep the money for yourself. What was that? Gustav, you filthy rat! That was the girl who was screaming! Gustav! Gustav! You won't steal a cent from me! Perfect! The seed has been sown! Cool! Oh, and thanks for calling me an idiot. I'm sorry, but it has to be credible. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. This came off great! It sure did. Excuse my lack of modesty, but I did a wonderful job here. And you don't even know about the icing on the cake yet. What icing? Listen, and try not to fall to the floor and kiss my feet. I hacked into a Swiss bank and created an account under Gustav and Theodore's names with a balance of $20 million. I printed up a receipt from the account and stuck it into Gustav's wallet. It's hidden well enough that he won't find it before the right time. Tomorrow, I'll instruct Oscar to take the killers out of the jail, blindfold them, and take them far away from here. I'll tell him to abandon them on some remote highway, but to make sure he gives them their stuff back first. Either I'm way off here, or the Sandrettis will soon find them. I wouldn't want to be in their skin when the Sandrettis find the receipt from the Swiss bank. Simply brilliant, Sushi! You never cease to amaze me. The only thing is, I'll have to lend Oscar the thug's car. I thought I'd use it myself to pick up Gina and go straight to the Mojave Bank before having a panic attack, but... Oh, take it. It doesn't matter. Oscar can just take one of my Hummers tomorrow. One of your Hummers? Yeah, I have three in the barn, so that's all worked out. Anyway, let me tell you something. I hate goodbyes. I always end up in tears. So I'd rather just stay here by my computer instead of watching you leave, okay? Thanks for everything, Sushi. I'll never forget you. Goodbye, Brian. Please come back someday. And send me some email. My address is sushidouglas at hotmail.com. Of course I'll write to you, Sushi. So long. Farewell. Sheriff, I've got a mosey. I've got an urgent mission elsewhere. I'm taking the prisoner's car, all right? Sure. The keys are in the ignition. About those two guys in there? Just follow Sushi Douglas's orders. She's the mayor of Douglasville. I'll do that. See you soon, Oscar. Adios, amigo. Bye, Brian. We'll miss you. He was gay, wasn't he, man? What? It's amazing how Sushi helped me put all the pieces together, isn't it? She's an amazing girl. I picked up Gina at Mama Dorita's house. Her leg had almost totally healed, so we headed for the Mojave Bank. We got there at dusk. That wouldn't be a problem. Sushi made sure it was the kind of bank where customers can do transactions at any time of day. We were pretty scared, but it turned out getting the money was simpler than we expected.
Can you believe it? There I was, driving a car stolen from a bunch of murderers with a beautiful woman at my side and 20 million bucks in the trunk. Las Vegas was close by, so we headed that way. We ditched the car and checked into a luxury hotel. Throwing caution to the wind, Gina insisted we get the best room in the hotel. The honeymoon suite. Obviously for newlyweds. So, we signed in under bogus names, pretending we just got hitched. Let me tell you guys, that sure made up for the bad days I've had. Gina and I, well, let's just say we had time to get more up close and personal. One morning when we went down to breakfast, we read in the newspaper that two guys' bodies had shown up riddled with bullets in a New York alley. Their description left no room for doubt. It was definitely Gustav and Fyodor. They didn't give any further information in the paper, but I can imagine what went down. Stop lying, you leeches. Where's the money? I swear we don't have it, Don Roberto. That tramp's little friend is smarter than we thought. He framed us. So what about that telephone call? I never made that call, Don Roberto. You filthy mutt. Do you think I can't recognize your scratchy, betraying voice, you cellar rat? We aren't lying, Don Carlo. We would never betray you guys. Roberto, perhaps they aren't deceiving us. Gustav and Fyodor are our best men, and they've always been loyal. I know, Carlo. I know. But unfortunately, loyalty comes at a hefty premium these days. And I guess losing it for $20 million isn't a bad deal. So, let's see if your faithful boys have an explanation for this. It was tucked away very nicely in Gustav's wallet. Hey, you scumbags! Hey, nobody laughs at Carlos Andretti to his face. No, Don Carlo, don't do it. Hey! Damn it, Carlo. If they're dead, we'll never get back the money. I don't care. We got more than enough dough. The most important thing is that nobody else will be enjoying our money. Everything turned out all right after all. And frankly, I felt no remorse for those two killers. I was just sorry the Sandrettis didn't get what they deserved, too. Anyway, even though it was unlikely that the Sandrettis would follow up on the matter, it was safer for Gina to take a long vacation where nobody'd recognize her. The Cayman Islands seemed like the perfect place. Gina insisted I go with her, but I... Well, look, I just couldn't. I'd worked so hard to earn my chance to study at Berkeley, I, I couldn't just throw it all away. We made it. Brian, are you sure you don't want to come with me? No, Gina. I worked really hard to be able to come here, and I can't just let it all go by the wayside. Whatever you want. I'm gonna miss you. I'll miss you, too. But it's for the best. This is where I belong. You could always take a year off, and then... That wouldn't work. Be happy, Gina. See you soon. I'd be happier with stubborn old you. Goodbye. Why do I feel like a total idiot? What did you forget now? Well, something tells me you're dying to come with me. Am I right? Maybe, but what about you? M what about me? Are you dying for me to go with you? Of course. You know that, silly. Well... Now that I think about it, Berkeley's been here for over a hundred years, so... I guess it can wait one year more.
Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Ryan's the kind of geek who'd rather be studying at Berkeley than a party with a hot girl. Well, I admit I almost did. But at the last minute, I heard a little voice say something I heard in a movie a long time ago. In the film, the main character reaches the conclusion that there are times in life when you have to know when to say... <laughs> what the heck? Hey, darling. Can you rub some lotion on my back? Of course, dear. I'll be right with you. Well, friends, now I must bid you farewell. As you can see, duty calls. I hope I haven't bored you too much with this little adventure story. So, uh, I'll be seeing you real soon, okay? Brian, are you coming? Yep. So, like I said, friend, see you soon. <laughs>